Coming to you live from my apartment, it's Rob has a podcast, and now here's the guy who appreciates the reminder to keep telling myself how awesome I am. I am Rob Sisternino. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Rob has a podcast here for our feedback show at The Merge, episode number seven of Survivor, David versus Goliath, and we have gotten... A great get for you today because uh, we have here in the studio, back with us, very excited to bring in the Mayo of Slamtown. Here he is, the Mayo Jar himself, Nick Majorano. Nick, how are you? I am amazing. The best get. The best gets you can get. One of the better gets. Okay. Yes. Nick, how, how have you been? Lovely. Fantastic. When was the last time I was here? Uh, spring? It, it was April 1st. 2018. Oh, with Wiggler. Yes. Ah, yes. yes. And I, I remember it well because I got I got epically owned on April Fool's Day this year. Oh, that's, that's true. Uh, that's how I will always remember that was the day that you and Josh came here to do the Wiggle Room. Right. And it was I've shed the Wiggler and I'm on my own again. Yes. So uh, I don't what, need him. What's been going on with, with you and Josh? It's uh, um we we've, we've been on good terms. We good. worked together to uh, have your fortieth birthday a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago. So yes. we, so we were in tandem. We were in unison. That and, was uh, nice that you guys got to catch up. Yeah. So it was very nice. And maybe I'll see him over the holidays when I'm in New Jersey. Okay. What you'll have? What Thanksgiving with him? No, not Thanksgiving. Maybe uh, Hanukkah? around around <laughs> around Hanukkah time, Christmas time. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Uh, I'll be there for two weeks. So maybe I'll see him. Okay. All right. Well, uh, happy to have uh, you here with us live in the studio to talk about what's going. on on with the survivor david versus goliath and uh really interested to hear uh, what you have to think about this season i'm interested to hear what you have to say yeah. i want to go back and forth here i'm loving the season i know you are right yeah it's been a really good season i have almost zero complaints almost o opposite of bradley right yes why well, he had a lot of complaints no i don't think he has a lot no he just has a lot of complaints in general in correct? general but not necessarily about the the season no uh, how are you keeping yourself busy these days uh, still working, still training, still mentoring, uh, teenagers and, uh, working on some side projects, writing a little bit. Yeah. So we'll see where those go. What, what does that entail when you're mentoring teenagers? Uh, so like I'll meet with them for an hour. So if they have, uh, some issues at home or if, uh, they're acting out. So we'll just, you know, exercise or like, throw around a football. How do or... they get into, uh, are you like a, a big brother? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's almost like a big brother program, but paid. Okay. Yeah. And so very similar. There's a kid. He's sort of on the wrong side of the tracks. A little bit. Yeah. Here comes. Here comes uh, Nick. Do they call you Coach Nick, or they or they just call you Nick? No. No calling me Coach. No Benjamin Wade in this house. Mm -hmm. uh, no. They just call me Nick. And what do you do? You say like uh, like hey. Hey kid, like come on, let me th that. Uh, let's let's go throw around the the old pigskin, right? And then and shaping up your attitude, yeah. Buddy. Get off the Snapchat <laughs> and get out in the park. Right, right. And so start you doing your schoolwork, so buddy. So you're, you're like a Caesar Milan, and then you get you run the kids around, and they get their exercise, and they're, and they're better behaved. Is that what well, goes on? Well, yeah, you know, you talk through some issues or whatever, and mm -hmm. you know, you have to talk to the parents and make sure. Uh, you remedy any situations that come up. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of the kids get sent away sometimes to yeah. schools or programs. So these are kids that are, you know, really, uh, they've, they're in trouble. Yeah, it's usually when it sort of hit rock, it's, hits rock bottom. It's yeah. not as preventive well, as What do you like. do, like, do you deal with a lot of kids that are uh, depressed and maybe they don't necessarily know that that's, the, you know, they, they don't self-diagnose, but do you, how do you deal with uh, kids like that? Yeah, see, I don't know if they'd be depressed, but you're right. They, they might be bummed out about uh, school or their friend circle or something like that, or they don't really have something to mm -hmm. do. And so they tell you there's another kid at the school that they have a problem with, and then then the they show up at the school, you're with them, and then you beat up the bully. Yep. I just go fist to fist with these like twelve year old boys, fifteen <laughs> yeah. year old boys, just knock them out. It solves all the problems. And then and then they I hey, I you I better not have a problem with you again. <laughs> and or I'll be back. And it's solved. And it's solved. That's why I keep getting hired. Yeah. A few black eyes, a few restraining orders, but I'm mm -hmm. okay. And is it only young men or Yeah, it's yeah. just young men. I don't think I'd be able to do young women. Okay. I don't think I'd be able to pull it off. All right. Well, this is a very uh, noble thing that you do. I know. Very Chris Noble of me. Yes. Uh, <laughs> very beneficiary to society. <laughs> yeah, maybe he and I could team up one day. I think he would be good at this sort of thing, too. Yeah, no, I mean, I think he's a good guy, right? Yeah. 
I would think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, who knew that you had this side of you? I know. I'm a sweetheart, aren't I? Because uh, people misunderstand you. I'm a good person. You. People misunderstand you, don't they? Do they? Uh, yeah, but I think that's kind of intentional, right? I kind of like that. You like it. Yeah, I like that. I'd rather you think I'm one thing than the other. Because you're kind of a closed book, right? That you don't really, you don't really let people, you, you don't really let the outside world in. Yeah. You're very private. Yeah, I keep the cards close to the vest for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. yeah. You really don't, you don't talk a lot about your social life. No, I tend not to. Correct. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and like, you know, I'm not a big poster on social media as much as, you know, like I'm very superficial, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Because, I, yeah, I don't want to get into it. I'm going to keep all that stuff to myself. It's special. Right. Special when you keep it to yourself, don't you think? I do think, but on the, on the other hand, that I kind of feel like that uh, I tend, I, I'm an open book. You are. And that makes you more vulnerable. That makes it more uh, welcoming, I suppose. So that's also a good thing. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know if I have anything going on that's that interesting, but that, uh, like, uh, I'm an oversharer also. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> by, by design, though. By work. Right. Right, like I have nothing to hide because, and so here you could, but so and then I, everybody feels like your friend, which is a good thing. That's that's a good thing. That's why. So I like I like that. I like that. But if I had if I had anything that was worth hiding, oh, then, wait, wait, then wait. I, I feel like then even you know I feel like you have like an exciting uh, you know social life. I like, know well, I'm not hiding anything of worth. Although Kellen did say on the previous podcast, she said I'd be a fun guy to party with. She did say that actually. Let me play you. She left you a, a message. She was very flattering. Yes. I met her once, and you know what I did, Rob? You know, I met her at the finale after Ghost Island, and I said to her like the first thing I said to her was, "Hey, where's Bradley?" or "How's Bradley?" And, mm-hmm. and she just like she bantered with me. She was just like. Are you serious? I'm not Bradley. I'm Kellen. Like, why yeah. are you asking, why are you about, asking Bradley? about somebody else? Such a noob. Such yeah, a noob. Such a noob. Uh, Here's here, I, I asked her to leave you a voicemail in my uh, podcast with her, which I thought was very fun. Uh, that's up on Rob's website.com. Uh, this was what, Kellen's uh, question. Hey, Robio, and hey, Nick Mayo Jario. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, guys? Thank you so much for doing the feedback show. Um, uh, my question is for Nick. I remember talking to you at the finale party, I think. Yeah. It, I think it was you. I think I was laughing a lot at your jokes. And I think we made plans to hang out later, but I haven't heard from you yet. What's been keeping you busy since then? Hit me up, bro. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. So she was waiting for you to, to give her a call. It sounds like she must have been a little bit more tipsy than I remember. Well, you know what? It's the finale. That's it a is. whirlwind for the players that are on their season. It's it not like is. you ran into her for a finale for another season. You know, it's a, that's their night. It's a long right. night for them. They meet everybody. Right. That's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she wants to get close to me, it sounds like. She wants it to go out. Like, yeah, she wants to follow up. Oh, well, well, we can go out. She lives in Denver, though, correct? Yes, that is correct. Uh, well, maybe we can meet up on the island. How about that? Meet up on the Survivor <laughs> Island. Okay. We, we can cozy up. I'll cozy up next to Kellen. Well, that as like long the, as Bradley... you're trying to pregame for... No, yeah. no, not yeah, pregame. Okay. As long as Bradley gives me the yeah. go-ahead. All right. Well, uh, let's... Uh, let's. Uh, I don't think... I don't know. Let, let's, let's leave that out of there. So <laughs> let's talk about what's going on here with Season 37, David versus Goliath. Uh, people that are watching the video say that you, you look very Goliath-like, Nick. What does that mean? I look uh, large and in charge? Do I look like a big person? Yeah, I think so. And I think that maybe that I'm, I'm looking especially David-like on the oh, video today. Oh, yeah, well, hey, I think it's the white t-shirt. It makes you look... Is that what it is? Yeah, it makes you look, look a little more Goliath, a little bit more crisp. Oh, I didn't even know yeah, that. That's I, a thing? Yeah, See, I, think... I feel like I'm too pale to pull off a, oh. a white t-shirt. Oh, yeah, I think you do need a little bit of color. I think that's, I maybe that's, that's what it is. But talk to me, Nick, about uh, this, the Survivor merge. We had a very fun episode the other night. And so I am uh, very interested to know, who are your favorite people to watch on this season? Currently, that are still in the episode, still well, in the season? Well, was there somebody that is gone that was your favorite person? I did enjoy Natalie, of course. That's a uh, given. But, I mean, uh, she's not the type of person I would hang out with, I suppose I would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she definitely brought conflict, so that's always nice to you watch. You like that. As yeah. a as a, you know observer of the show, a lot of people don't know this, that you used to blog about the show. I know. Well, I heard you in another podcast. I forget which one it was. Maybe it was, oh, it was with Randy, saying... Uh, how many survivors have watched every episode? It's probably only a handful. It's maybe like five. Maybe we could ba- we could barely name them. I was yeah. like, dude, you watched, watched all every of them? single episode. Every single You've episode. Never missed a season. Never missed a season. You, but watch, I went back. You went back. Well, mm-hmm. I did too. There's nothing to uh, you know. There's no shame in that. No shame in no shame in that game. 
But uh, I do think it's a small number. I mean, I think I was probably, I said, I think I said it might have been single digits, but I think it's probably under 25. Okay, I'll give you that. I think it's right around 25. I've seen every single episode of the show. Okay. Well, I'm one of them. Dang. Okay. All but right. uh, no, yeah, so I'm enjoying Natalie. Um, I actually did enjoy Jeremy on the show. Mm-hmm. I know I didn't. Li- I didn't like his post game antics. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to be graceful, gracious in your like uh, you were. Exit inter- right. Yeah, I mean, like I lied in my exit interviews, right? Why, what did so, you lie about? Well, you're just nicer. You just lie about. Okay, you. So you were like, you were polite. Yeah, I was polite. You were gracious, which is lying if you're just like beating around the bush, technically. Mm-hmm. So it, the, that, that's the route you have to take at all times, I think. To at least seem decent, like a decent human being. But anyway... Uh, <laughs> in Survivor Exit Press or in yeah, life? Yeah, yeah. Well, in life as well. Yeah. But uh, uh, so Jeremy, Natalie, um, and I... Oh, I, obviously Christian I enjoy. And then uh, I think that's almost it. But but everybody else is good, but I just enjoyed those three, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but All it's right. a great cast. Oh, my goodness. Big Survivor merge uh, here in this episode. Uh, let me see. I, I have a question for you from one of our listeners. Of course, this is our feedback show. We're going to be taking questions from the callers who have called in. That We have a question for you from John, who called in to ask you a question about the merge. Hey, Rob and Nick. This is John. Uh, Nick, I, I really just wanted to say how excited I was and, and surprised, really, to hear that, that Rob had invited you to be on the, co- the uh, podcast. Um, you know, I thought about it more, and then I realized it was probably because, you know, this was the merge episode, and you were the first post-merge vote off on your season. But, uh, yeah, it's it's just really nice to, to hear from you. Um, <laughs> do you still keep up with Austin at all? Yeah. Um, yeah, just uh, really excited to hear the show, and uh, thanks a lot. Bye. Okay. I feel like I'm being insulted right now. Yes. And is Austin from Australian Survivor for Nick Iadonza? <laughs> no, or no, is... no, no, no. Big that, brother? You remember Survivor Panama? I think uh, that John has you confused with uh, Nick that was Stanberry, on Survivor. Nick Stanberry. Nick Stanberry. Yeah, yeah, Come right. on. Yeah, I've seen every episode, but I guess I can't remember Austin. Oh, wait. It's all, who's Austin? Austin and Nick, they uh, ate the beans and they, you know they had a lot of problems. Well, okay. that, that's insulting. But that's a different Nick. That's not. This is Nick Myrano from Survivor Co. Wrong. Right. Better than Nick Wilson, but I'm sure we'll get to that later. Well, that's a good question because we saw that on Twitter that I got I a did. question from you. Well, I, I got a question from you on tw- about that on Twitter. I saw uh, it as well. This is one from uh, Ganavit Guru sixty nine. Is uh, Nick worried that the other Nick uh, is going to surpass him in terms of being the best survivor? Nick, am I going to become the Nick that sucks? I don't know if you're the Nick that sucks, but okay. if we were going to rank the survivor Nicks, well, I've been putting more thought into this as uh, Nick has got Nick Wilson has gotten more and more screen time, and he's been, you know been in the uh, in a bunch of alliances, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, if he wins. Or if he comes mm-hmm. back, mm-hmm. then I automatically get to go by Mayo, do I not? If we're on the same season. Yeah, I don't think a Nick has ever come back. Well, I know there's yeah, there's been a poor string of Nicks. So on there's the show. you, there's it's Nick Stanberry, Nick Wilson, Nick Stanberry, and then Nick from uh, Randy Nick. season, right? There was a Nick on Randy season. Okay, I'm wrong. I don't think so. Uh, there's Nick Brown. Nick Brown, that's Nick what I'm Nick Brown from Survivor Australia. Oh, I don't okay. know if there's been another Nick, and then there's been Nicole's, and there's Nick Iadanza. Yeah, Nick Iadanza. No, I'm, I'm, obviously, I'm obviously at the top of those guys. Those guys are bums compared to me. Better, better than Nick Brown? Yes. I mean, he went far, far in the game. No, but he was, he was irrelevant. Mm-hmm. So, so was I, I guess. But... No, no. I'm at the top. Nick Wilson, though, is charging ahead. I'll he give him that. He might be the last person that Survivor would bring back from uh, Survivor Australia. Maybe really? You between, think so? Between him, Kel, and uh, Deb Eaton, and Mitchell, I think. That's probably the, the, the four, the Mount Rushmore of the four people that Survivor would not have on a second season. Okay, fine. From that season. Fine. <laughs> but I would be brought back before Nick Brown. I, th- pro- I think so. Thank you. But Nick Wilson is that the, the this I know, is the one he's making a charge. About. I know. But like I said though, if he's on a second chance season and we both get on, I go by Mayo automatically. Wonderful. Works yeah. out. But if he wins and I win, he's gonna be <laughs> so, the first so now Nick who won. He wins and then you come back and you also win? Yeah, double double down on Nick. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So But I am worried. 
What do you you are worried that he is going to be the survivor? But do people really think of you as the survivor, Nick? I feel like that you've become the mayo jar. Oh, I've become the mayo jar because of rap. Okay, that's fine. I mean, I'll come back as Mayo no matter what. Mm -hmm. Whether he's on my I feel like that your persona as the Mayo jar has gotten Uh, Ah, it's taken off. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's good. My buddies call me Mayo. I'm good with it. That's good. Okay. All right. So this merge, Elizabeth was uh, the merge Mm. boot. Did you like Elizabeth? Uh, Yes and no. She reminds me of like a younger person. A Uh, younger person? uh, Like a baby? Like a little childish, not mm-hmm. in a bad way, but like, uh, you know, when you overreact to stuff or when you get upset about the bamboo sleeping on the shelter, granted she had a back injury. I've had a back injury before, so mm-hmm. I can sympathize with Why, that. Why? How did you injure your back? I've herniated my disc about five times and I've gotten surgery, like a micro discectomy. Yeah. So clip off the disc and I've had sciatica that runs down the leg. How did you nerve. get that? Is that a, uh, a, is that an injury or is that something that you're born with? No, it's something you're, no, it's an injury uh, from like weightlifting or picking something up mm-hmm. or whatever you or just over time yeah. yeah so it just sucks it hurts so i get it was that an issue for you on survivor like could you not sleep on the same sort of materials that the other players could sleep on because of your back no i was healthy then but actually when i was applying for 25 26 and thought i could maybe get onto 28 i had herniated my disc right before mm-hmm. 27 28 were filming so i thought if i get on I'm going to be in serious trouble. Yeah, I'm but then you pain. healed before... But then I healed before 32. Okay. Yeah. Um, did you try to split the bamboo when you were out there? Did you did you know about that? We did split the bamboo. I believe Caleb and Ty knew to split the bamboo, and that's what we did. How did Caleb know about this? I don't know. Or maybe Ty knew it. But, yeah. we, but we did it on our tribe, and it, it was fine. It's naughty. It sucks. It really does suck. But it's part of the game. It's mm-hmm. what you're there for. It's naughty. K-N-O-T-T-Y. Correct. Okay. Yeah, uh, we did not. I don't know if we had bamboo. Maybe in uh, Panama. I, I, I don't. Why? Really, what'd you have instead? In the Amazon, I think we, we just like cut down like uh, small trees. Really? Like we had like like yeah. So the this is a little inside baseball. So producers didn't cut down trees for you and leave them around the. No, no, okay. we had to. You know, you know. We're, we're obviously not cutting down bamboo. Mm-hmm, right. Um, in terms of, you know, that we had, we all had machetes. I had to like go out there and it's like, brutal. Really... And those machetes stink. They're not great. They're, <laughs> they're not uh, great. Not ideal. They're rusty. They don't chop. That's really why well. Matthew had to really sharpen his <laughs> to try to try to do something with it. Okay. Um, talk to me about, uh, uh, how this vote was handled in terms of the target being Elizabeth or Christian. Do you feel like that Christian was indeed the right target? Well, it depends who you are, right? It always depends who it benefits most. If you're not with Christian, which I seem like Angelina was not, Mm -hmm. not in his good graces, or have they even played together yet? No, right? No, they have not. So that would make sense from Angelina's point of view. Um, From people who've worked with him, it would not make sense. And the funny thing about the merge is it tends to be a safer vote. Yes. Just Just like the very first vote of the season tends to be a safer vote. Yeah. Uh, Well, this is actually uh, an interesting question. And so let me bring in a voicemail that talks about this. And this is from one of our listeners, Sarah from Connecticut. Hi, Rob and Nick. This is Sarah from Connecticut. I'm wondering if you think that the discussion about the typical merge boot should shift from a strong challenge threat man to any woman vulnerable in the minority alliance. Looking at the past 10 seasons, almost all of the merge boots are women. In David versus Goliath, you have Elizabeth. In Ghost Island, it was Chris Noble. He's an exception, but Libby is the boot that follows right after him. We have Jessica in Healers versus Heroes versus Hustlers. We have Haley in Game Changers. We have Michelle in Millennial versus Gen X. We have Neil Medevac from Korong, but... Aubrey may have very well been that boot if they had gone to tribal council. We have Cass in Cambodia. We have Kelly in Worlds Apart. Julie quit in San Juan del Sur. And Sarah was voted out as the merge boot in Cagayan. What do you guys think? Okay. Nick, we talk about the merge boot. We talk about it being the young athletic male. Has it shifted now? It certainly has, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Um, I do believe it's just been delayed, though. That's I think that's the only case. Yeah, uh, it's just been delayed to the next vote or the yeah. next two votes, whatever it is. So, 
I think that it's the shift has been that it sort of has gone to, you know, the person that is not really a part of, you know, either group. They're like, who is the most expendable person that the group can sort of come to a consensus on? I think that that's what it's been. And it's not always that. But even in the case of Chris Noble last season, where he was sort of that person that the consensus arrived on of, okay, this is the person that we can get rid of. Like the most people agree of like, okay, this is an easy thing to take off the, you know, the Jenga board. Right. And I totally agree with that. Going back to my season. Yeah. Technically I'm not the merge boot. So it's either Neil or Aubrey. And like, it's, it, it's comparable to the first vote of the season when, yeah, you just want to get off the person where it's a unanimous or as close to a unanimous decision as you can make it. And it's an easier vote. And it's the person who's not fitting in as much. Mm -hmm. And that was like an Aubrey and Neil situation. Those first three days are critical. And those first three days of the merge, some people don't fit in immediately. And those are the people that'll most likely get voted out. Yeah, I think there's actually a couple different things going on here, which is uh, pretty interesting. So you have sort of the... the you don't often have like the two sides coming into it where okay it's our five versus their five we are going to vote out their strongest guy here at the merge because he'll win the immunities that's sort of gone that's away passed, yeah. that that's sort of passed and i think that also the other thing that's going on here is sort of the rise of the hidden immunity idol mm-hmm. where now there's a, a you know a meta discussion as well of Uh, It's not just our side versus their side, but it's also who is most likely to have the hidden immunity idol. And then on top of that, we also have the thing where, okay, who are the types of people most likely to find the hidden immunity idol? We get back to that conversation of so many of the men finding the hidden immunity idols in these seasons. Okay, well, who's the least likely to have the hidden immunity idol? And I wonder if when we go back to Kagiyan and there was some sort of a talk about like, oh, we should put it on Jeffra. Jeffra's the least likely likely to have the hidden immunity idol we'll go after her at the merge like i think that that sort of thinking has uh, you know a uh, really taken hold of you know haley is is not likely to have the uh, immunity idol and i think that that's uh, where this comes from where elizabeth nobody is thinking she has the hidden immunity idol she's sort of an easy piece to take off the board and that's why you know the uh, roulette wheel stops on her Right. And and I also think, too, people are understanding maybe that the challenges aren't all about uh, that Chris Noble can win mm-hmm. or a guy like John or Dan from the season can win. There's going to be puzzles. There's going to be balancing. There's going to be stuff that favors smaller people or smarter yeah. people. So the irony about the Chris Noble thing is that he actually did have an idol. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that last, was, last second idol. That yeah. was sort of the ironic part yeah. of Chris Noble. But like, uh, like Jessica, going back to you know, she was she was a uh, a key person, but then she also had the thing of that they thought she was the least likely to have an idol. They're like, oh, maybe Cole has the idol, so let's put it on Jessica because she's less likely to have the idol. So I do think you have uh, you know two factors at work there why the merge boot has shifted from what who we traditionally think of the merge boot. Yeah, and I would say even say. If it, if it is a mer, uh, uh, a guy who's great at challenges or even a female that's great at challenges, they almost have to be annoying as well or irritating as well. Because like I, I was after the six days, the, the vote out after the merge, and I was getting under Michelle's skin. I was getting uh, to be a little uh, condescending towards Michelle even more so. So I became irritating and I won that first challenge, which hurt me. So I think you have to always to be both things now. Irritating and good at challenge to be that first boot Mm -hmm. yeah well i I talked to kellen last night about this and uh, we talked we saw dr allison win that first challenge Mm -hmm. uh do you think that that is a bad idea for these survivors yes yes if you don't need to win that first challenge you have to trust your instincts you feel like that really raised your profile yeah because yeah. it could mean I don't. I in the end I don't believe I needed to win it. So if Allison truly believes she didn't need to win it, she shouldn't have tried to win. Uh, and that's hard to do in that situation because I wasn't capable of doing it. Because you're there to compete. You're you're a competitive person most likely if you're on the show. So I get it. But you can't win challenge. You can't win immunities that you don't feel you need. Mm-hmm. And that's just so hard because something can change after the fact. But you have to trust your instinct, I think. And I would like to say I would do that moving forward. Okay. We saw this strike force come together uh, this week, Nick. Are you feeling good about the formation of the strike force? 
I do. I mean, it seems like the Brochachos get along, uh, part of that strike force. Um, Gabby's in that, correct? She is. Yeah. Um, Gabby, Christian, Nick, and then Alec, Mike, and Allison. Oh, it's Alec, Mike, and Allison. Oh, so I got it wrong with the Brochachos. What are they in I, I, Well, uh, Christian, uh, Christian is in it. Right, right. But, Christian um, is in it, but not but not John and not Dan. I mean, that's an in- interesting mix of people. Uh, I could see them sticking together for a little bit, but again, Alec is the wild card. Mm-hmm. He's the one that can flip it on its head. At least that's what we've been showing thus far. Yes. Were you impressed with Alec this week? I was. Obviously, it seemed like he was dictating the action, um, even though it maybe came from Carl, correct, uh, about Elizabeth? So the initial germ of the idea seemed like it came from Carl. Carl seemed like the one that he was the right. most frustrated with Elizabeth. He put Elizabeth's name out there, and, I, you know, he's coming from the same tribe as Alec, so maybe that there was, uh, you know, some talk between, maybe there's scenes that we didn't see where Alec is saying to Carl and Davey, hey, it's Elizabeth tonight, right? right. Okay, great. So, well, for it to be a unanimous vote, she had she had to have been a, a little bit irritating, like kind of what we saw her uh, getting frustrated over the bamboo. So she had to have been a little bit more uh, getting on people's nerves. But for Alec, yeah, no, it's been impressive. But you have to wonder, I think, as a lot of people are, is he playing too hard? Is he being too visible? Is he looking like somebody that will flip to the other people? Kind of like Angelina is being a little transparent with her requests of a jacket and all that yes what is she what is she doing that's being so transparent uh i think she's probably dictating too much is exactly what i was guilty of Mm -hmm. um trying to come up with the plan and be like oh no this makes the most sense with granted to her it probably did and does um but not giving the people a chance to speak or give their two cents Mm -hmm. in the alliance yeah it it, it winds up coming across as no why do we have to listen to her why do we have to listen to him Mm -hmm. that's not and so so that's why it's a little transparent i think and then the whole crocodile tear stuff that's obviously transparent to the rest of her tribe mates (sighs) yes i feel like that that is uh sort of uh you know a a big part of you know uh where this discrepancy because i because i feel like if i could channel her I feel like that she's probably, you know, not happy with this perception. If I if I was guessing, mm-hmm. for sure, yeah. I mean, you can't be happy with it. Like if you back on my season, we had Ty go through Caleb's things, his boots, to see if Ty, uh, Caleb had an idol. But then all of a sudden, Ty he does that in front of everybody while Caleb's not around, and it looks like Ty is sneaky. Mm-hmm. Just like I think somebody else was looking in somebody else's clothes this season. I forget who. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you when you come across that way, it's hard to come back from that. It really is. But Ty, Ty did great. He made it to the end, just didn't get any votes, though. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think Angelina's in that same spot where it's like, no, Angelina, you're shady. And mm-hmm. I came across the same way, so I can't knock it. Yeah. It's, it's a crappy position to be in. I don't know how she recovers. Do you think she does? I don't think that she, I don't know if it's a matter of recover. I, I don't know if she necessarily, you know, was in the position to, you know, take this all the way prior to this week's vote. But I do think that, you know, that she, um, you know, is going to be, have even more of a spotlight on her. And I think that maybe her exit is accelerated based off of this. Right. And that's what I mean. Yeah. So I don't know if she can recover from getting voted out now at yeah. this point. You know, one of the things that um, I had wanted to talk about from the episode that I haven't gotten into yet was this idea of when can you tell the person who's going home that it's going to be them? This has been really, you know, a a, a, cru- a crucial Survivor conversation really since Lex in Survivor Africa, uh, that Lex would pull people aside and say, hey, just so you know, I want to, you know, it's you tonight. And it's never received well. Right. He didn't, How he, do you do this? Didn't Albert do it as well in South Pacific? Um, you know, it's it's the kind of thing that people always feel like I'm going to do you a solid. Right. I'm going to let I'm going to let you it's know. Not a solid. And people always blame the messenger. I, I I did it wrong on my season with Michelle. I told her she was going home mm-hmm. the very first vote just to try and protect her, just to try and save her. And look what happened. She won. And it didn't go well for me the way I was communicating with her. So it sounds like a bunch of malarkey to me. <laughs> Yeah. Her win sounds like a bunch of malarkey to me. Oh, oh come on, come on, come boy. on. No, come I know. Um, but anyway, so sh- telling somebody that you're going to vote that they're that they're the target, you can't do it. You just can't. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, it just it'll just blow up in your face, and it's not worth the sympathy or the empathy that you feel for the person or the jury votes. However, you want to angle it, you can't do it. 
Do you feel like that Angelina was trying to get the jury vote? Do you feel like that that was the, the motive there? Uh, I think it's a partial motive, but I also think she probably genuinely liked, uh, Elizabeth based on the exit interviews that Elizabeth said, you know, they had the military stuff in common. Mm -hmm. Um, but (sighs) you almost have to tell somebody, okay, the only way it works, you have to tell somebody who's, uh, this is going to come across wrong, but logical. Uh, you have to almost have to tell like a James from Ghost Island Mm -hmm. who, won't get emotional, won't... He'll think through every possible angle and scenario where he where he could possibly get out of it without turning to revenge or uh, uh, being emotional for you telling him that you were going to vote yeah. him out. So, and this happens a lot on Big Brother, too, where people are going to tell, like, hey, just, you know, you're going to go home. But I, I think where it's the problem is when you are seen as sort of a, a, a decision maker or mm-hmm. somebody who has agency in the decision and then you go to a person and say oh, i wish there was something i could do my hands are tied and right. it's like well i don't know like where in the instance of like going back to your season where uh was it michelle voted for julia when she went home mm-hmm. and I, I don't think that michelle really had any agency in the decision to vote out julia but she did it because she wanted to be seen like she was on the same page as the people who did have the agency and that got her in, in, you know better ingratiated with the people who were making the call on that i almost feel like in that scenario it's like hey i love you i'm going to vote against you tonight because otherwise it will be me next and if i'm going to avenge you if i'm going to get them i have to go along with this plan like for instance like if gabby or christian you know they were sort of they had gotten word okay it's going to be you tonight elizabeth and they said hey elizabeth we have to vote for you. What other? We don't have any choice in the matter here. But where Angelina does it, she's seen as one of the people who's making that call. Even though Angelina is saying like, uh, I, "It's not my decision. I wish there's something else I could do." Um, it, it comes across as, "Well, you could do something. You could save me if you wanted to." That's true. It's coming from the majority versus coming th- from the minority. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. But again, I don't think it'll go over well, no matter what. Even even if Michelle did that with Julia, I don't think it would go over well. Mm-hmm. You're still going to be upset, right? Most people. Yeah, I mean, but I feel like if it's coming from, well, uh, you know, you have to do, you know, where then the other person could say, like, no, I understand you have to do what you have to do. It's not going to change anything if you vote for me or not. So I don't want you to sacrifice yourself for me if I'm already done. But but you know what, too? It's almost how you say it. Like, you, you had a good pitch. But, like, if you say you're just done, you're going to be voted out versus, hey, I think you're the target. Hey. Like, how can we figure this out together? Maybe that's a different wording. Because that's what Michelle did with me. She was like, Mm -hmm. Nick, I think you're the target at the merge. And I didn't get upset about it. You know, I tried to fix it. Mm -hmm. The other thing with this idea of telling Elizabeth that you're going to be the one to vote it out. I I wish there was something I can do, but I can't. And is that going to curry favor and win over Elizabeth's jury vote? I, I think that's a fundamental misunderstanding of how jury votes are won. Yeah, no, jury work, yeah, they do not work that way. They vote for the person, well, in my experience, obviously, they vote for the person that is least offensive. Mm Mm-hmm. So, no, I don't think that's how And you are somebody who's coming from a season with a very controversial jury. That's true. So, obviously, take my opinion based on that. But I don't think that a jury vote is ultimately won by, you know, somebody's last hour in the game. Hey, just to give you a heads up that... It's not, it, you know, I have, to, I have to tell you what's, what's what. Yeah, you would like to think no, and I do think that's the truth in the end, yeah. Mm-hmm. And well, I mean, you even had Dan, though, get upset, right? Over, you got uh, upset about a lot of things in this episode. Well, I know, I know. <laughs> um, but, but even Dan got upset about being uh, a target. Yeah. And it's like, why is every, what, what's, what, what is everybody crying about? What is everybody being upset about for being a target, guys? Okay. All right, well, let's bring in a voicemail question that deals with uh, this very subject of where uh, Dan was getting upset in this episode. And so uh, let's bring in a, uh, a familiar voice uh, that this is uh, somebody who's uh, going by the name Phil from Canada now. Hey, Rob and Kellen and or Nick Majorano. It's your boy, Phil from Love Canada, it. because I'm rebranding. Anyways, what's up? I have a question about fat, hot cop Dan Rangering. Has this guy always had an accent, or was it 
just me in this episode where he sounded extremely like southern i don't know do florida people have a southern accent i don't understand anyways whatever can you analyze this for me this is very important anyways deuces fam okay thank you phil from canada <laughs> phil from canada love him on the wiggle room okay um I don't know what did you hear an accent? Okay, so tell me. Um, there's a theory going around. Maybe uh, did a theory? Did, did, a theory? Yes. Uh, Dan, Dan's voice in this episode did seem to have like a, a different uh, affect on it, and so here I don't know if I have Dan talking. Let me see if I have Dan talking from earlier this season. Is this a doctored um, video? No, not a doctored video. <laughs> we don't do that. We don't okay. do that around here. Okay. Um, so let me see if I have any Dan quotes from earlier in the season. Maybe I have. Okay, uh, Dan talking about his Goliath story. This is from Dan early on in the game. Uh, not upset, okay? Fat Dan, as I like to call him, I never would have had the confidence to walk around here and proudly say that, yes, I'm a Goliath. But now, the most beautiful girls tell me I'm very good looking. Okay, so that was Dan early on in the game. Okay. This was Dan in this episode, okay? Uh, here's, here's Dan. I am furious when I hear that Elizabeth is throwing my name out there. Oh, I was hot. And I, I don't really understand it because I ain't done anything astronomical. So why my name is being thrown out is beyond me. Is that Colby Donaldson? That's true. He turned it up a notch. Uh, he did have it a little bit in the beginning, if you know, if you can yes. detect it. Do you, so you feel like that he sort of was when keeping you, it off to the side and then uh, he lost his temper and now Southern Dan comes out? Well, right. When when you lose your temper or when you get a little animated, do you do you bring out the Long Island or the New York in you? Um, no, I Staten don't. Island? But, but uh, the First Lady of Podcasting definitely does. Yeah, we, we know that. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, here's another clip from Dan from this episode. You want to put my name out there? I'll show you what I can do. She's got to go. Oh, yeah. That's Donathan right there. Is that JT? JT. Uh, yeah, no, you're right. He does have a little bit of an accent and a little twang in him. Yeah. I mean, I'll do the same thing. I'll bring out the the East Coast, I guess. Like, hey, what are you talking about, man? Like that type of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was good. What do you think of Dan? Again, he's not my... Uh, you're gonna, I know what's exactly what you're going to say. It's the same thing I said about Ken. You're going to be like, oh, because he's what? He's in your demographic. That's why you don't like him. Or... I don't remember what you said about Ken. <laughs> well, I wasn't a fan of Ken because Ken was like uh, a brat, sort of, mm -hmm. or like uh, entitled. And that, that that's a common theme that you seem with, see with some of these players. I believe Angelina is one and Dan is, is Dan is another. And it's a reason why I wasn't a fan of Tasha in Kagayan and Second Chance. It's this entitlement. So I think Dan has that mm -hmm. where it's like, wait, somebody wants me to vote vote me out. Wait, somebody, something's going to go wrong for me. And that's how it comes across. So that's not likable. And I'm not a fan of it. Um, I'm sure he's a nice guy. The Prochachos thing is kind of funny. He, mm -hmm. seems, he seems innocent. Um, but I think I'm better than him. So that's all there is to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was very upset about the whole thing. He was, with, and Kara with handled it amazing. Kara has the right perspective. Yes, like that's what's gonna happen, dude. Mm -hmm. We're good. Yeah, uh, I like his words of affirmation though towards himself, self love. Yeah, yeah. You know, I wanted to uh, talk about that a little bit. Uh, let me play you a question, and then uh, it'll give us a uh, way to get into this. This is a question from one of our callers, and this is from Jason from Nashville. Here's Jason. You can do this, Jason. <laughs> You're awesome. Everyone loves you. You have the voice of an angel and the wisdom of a thousand fathers. <laughs> Rob's going to be clamoring to play your voicemail. <sighs> you got this. <laughs> hey, Rob and Nick. We saw Dan speaking words of affirmation to himself during the challenge. I'm sure Nick does the same thing in the mirror every morning. So, Nick, can you give us some insights into what you say to yourself so you can face the day? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Again, everybody's just, you know, I'm the punching bag. That's cool. Um... <laughs> No, see, actually, um, well, I sort of do that, but like in a jokingly way. I think he was doing this in a serious way, but I'll, I'll jokingly like talk to myself in the mirror. But if somebody else is around, like I think it's funny. Okay, so I, uh, before you get into your yeah. words of affirmation, uh, or do you want to tell us them and then we'll get into dance? No, well, then I'm going to get into dance because like I'm the opposite of Dan. Like if I'm in a challenge, I'd be cursing at myself. Words of deaffirmation. Yeah. Is that what you would say? Yeah. Well, was yeah. that like, oh my God, I suck, I suck, I no, suck. No, yeah, I'm yeah. So It'd be like, come, come on, come on, you piece of... Yeah. Piece of ass. Come on, you 
Come on, you little motherfucker. Try and try right. and finish this challenge. I'm not doing it. Is that what you say to the teenagers? Yeah, exactly. That's when I start pummeling them. Yeah. All right, but All what right. about Dan? So I, I tried to pull the clip from the episode, and the, the problem oh, yeah. is that without the captions, it is inaudible. Here, I mean, here's the clip of Dan's uh, positive self talk. So, unfortunately, it doesn't work yeah. as an audio clip. But what if uh, Nick Majorano was going to read you Nick's positive self-talk, oh. and then we can have that as oh, a sound right. clip whenever I need to. Like, I'm in a low moment, okay? okay? So, here we go. All right, here is the mayo jar. Now, this is not something I would normally do. No, but you are just, you I'm are... I'm impersonating Dan. You are the narrator of the audiobook of okay. Dan's uh, positive self-talk. Okay. Focus. Keep telling yourself how awesome you are. You are the man. Oh, did okay. we get that? Did we do it again? I think that I was think pretty we got good. It. I think we, I think we nailed it, bro, Chacho. I feel, I feel like I did it a little more sexual take, but uh, <laughs> that's fine. Okay. That's fine. People aren't complaining. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I was gonna say this for the social media, but Dan uh, did tweet about this. He tweeted, "Stop listening to what negative voices in your mind have to say about you. Replace those voices with positive thoughts and words. Don't ever let anyone make you feel guilty for showing yourself a little self love." Uh, barf, barf, now, barf. Look, barf. All my life, Nick, people have been trying to make me feel guilty about uh, showing myself some self love, and I refuse to as well. No matter what my uh, wife says. No, I think that's great, Rob. I, I do. I will continue. I do. No, I think that's wonderful. I just don't like. Dr. Mike says to do it as well. Oh, well, I know he does. He tells to do it in a different way. <laughs> but, I mean, well, and for scientific reasons or body reasons, but I just don't like those motivational posts. You don't like it? Oh, I despise them, Rob. They're all over the place on Instagram, on Twitter. Why? It's like, well, stop it. Okay. Everybody stop why, it. Why is that? But is it because is it because you have so much confidence and you don't want anybody else coming <laughs> up to your level? <laughs> right. Is that, what, is that what it is? Exactly. Exactly. You're trying to keep people down, You want to keep everybody... You yeah. want to keep everybody off, keep Listen. everybody else down. Listen. If we're you're being... Like a... the, the, you're like the confidence bouncer and then people are like, hey, I'm on the list. Look <laughs> at my so positive self-talk. Like, no. Get out of here. You're not welcome. You are not welcome. This is a party of one. Nah, it's cute. It's so phony. I'm not saying Dan's being phony, but for the most part, it's phony. Mm -hmm. it's people try and never mind. I'm not going to go into this. I'm going to sound like Bradley. Yes. So you don't find Dan to be a positive role model? No, no, he is. Uh, he is. Fake it till you make it, right? Mm -hmm. So go for it. Keep going. Keep with that positive self-talk. Yeah. Uh, even Angelina had some uh, positive self-talk in this episode. Oh, what she was, say? This was right before Remind Tribal me. Council. She talked to Elizabeth. And then right before Tribal Council, the last thing we saw before the commercial, she, uh, she uh, said this. I got this. I got this. Oh, yeah, she was. Well, I see, that almost feels different. She's pepping herself mm -hmm. up. She's pepping herself up. I got this. You got this, babe. We got, we're going to figure this out. We're going to work this out. <laughs> yeah, we got, we got this. Uh, I, I don't know if I have my We Goat This clip from uh, The Amazing Race, but uh, say, that's what that I from? say to myself. Yeah, hey, and, and she almost, she sort of had it. She didn't get voted out, right? So that's a good thing. Her plan changed, or the plan changed. She stayed. Yeah, I kind of feel like that was maybe edited out of order. I kind of felt like that maybe uh, that positive self-talk came before, like after the conversation where Dan, uh, or where it was revealed to her uh, that her person, that Christian was not going to be the, the target. Yeah, who knows? Was the sun setting? We go this! Okay, okay so that's... Just wanted to close the loop on that. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. No, it's good to pep yourself up. I got, mm -hmm. I got no problem with it. Yeah, but keep it off social media. What? You so you, you will you ever have a moment where you talk to yourself in a in a positive way? Yeah, by when I'm by myself or something like that, or if I need a pep talk, sure. Mm -hmm. But I'm not professing it on social media. Okay, so you're okay with in, in the challenge. Yeah, sure. But you think that it's that when people go out there on like uh, Instagram and then uh, and then and yeah. post that. What is everybody a motivational speaker all of a sudden? Yes. Are, are you aware of my friend Caitlin? No. 
Okay, Caitlin from Big Brother. No, no. Okay. Oh, I, guess. I think I do. I've seen. She a, has I've seen love a and light, bit. Nick. Right. Okay. Yeah. And people were questioning why, she, how she's in the. You guys should speaker. meet. No. No. <laughs> yes. No, no. If anything's true about her, we should not meet. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. What? Okay. Uh, Dan was also upset about the that he would have to potentially vote off Christian in this episode. He didn't yeah. like that. Yeah, they were upset. He was. He was very upset that uh, the vote was going to be Christian. Well, me, I'm torn, because I, Christian's a brochacho. I, I love that kid to death. Respect. He loves him. Dude, he's in love. Yo, he's in love with a woman and a man. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. But he's, he's in love. He's, this guy feels hard. He feels strongly. I think that's an admirable trait. Yeah. Uh, I guess he's going to let his feelings get in the way at some point here <laughs> with either Christian or Kara. Or they're all going to go to the end together and it's going to be a big love fest. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's nice to see, though, a, a more masculine guy, or however you want to phrase it, mm-hmm. and Christian uh, on the nerdier side, you know, coming together and forming a bond, whether it's real or game-wise. And that's a nice thing to see, so I can't knock that. Yeah. Um, this is a question that I, I, that I had, and I, I can't find the voicemail, so I apologize to the person that uh, sent it in. But uh, they wanted to know that uh, when the merge happened, wh- wh- why, why did Dan talk about Brochacho uh, in that moment? And I, be- I believe it was Dan. So this was, this was heading into uh, right before uh, the merge. Why, why was uh, Brochacho discussed at this point? And it's the Jimini tribe. And I'm thinking, this is the merge. The game starts now. Why is Brochacho the rally cry also? He's enthused about the Brochachos, man. He's enthused Does about Brochacho, getting Does the... is it, Brochacho, is it like uh, Aloha that it ha- or Shalom <laughs> that it has many different meanings? It means multiple things. Oh, oh right. It just means hello. Uh, greetings. Uh... Yeah, I mean, he's happy about it. But again, see, like, is that something that you like would Hodor? do? Like Hodor? Is that something that you would do? Uh, let's say you did have an alliance name or a, whatever, a, an endearing word for somebody else or a group of people. Mm-hmm. Would you shout that out in front of a bunch of other people? I would not. No, I would not because it seems like that it is uh, exclusionary. Where we even saw in the last episode where Gabby and Allison don't feel like that they are included in the brochachos. Right, and that's technically bad gameplay. It's a difficult thing to thwart, uh, mm-hmm. so I understand. But at the same time, yeah, you can't... You can't be almost overly affectionate towards your alliance mates. It's a, it's a fine line to uh, walk for sure, and it doesn't. For seem Nacho? Like... <laughs> yeah. Well, he was excited too. Did so. you have any named alliances? Uh, you and Ty? No, we didn't know. No names. You and think... Jason and Scott. Oh, the bullies. No, <laughs> I wasn't a part of that. But uh, no, yeah, no, no names. I do like how at least we're seeing names for uh, one season. It's fun. I know Jeff said some in some interview. He's trying. They're trying to make it more fun. So I think that's nice. Okay. But not, let's not see it every season, right? All right. Uh, let me play you another voicemail question, and this is one from our one of our listeners. Uh, Gene. Hi, Rob. It's Gene from Canada. Can we talk about that completely odd groan noise that Kara made after Dan called her his comfort blanket? It's about seven minutes twenty into the episode. Um, love to hear your thoughts. Thanks. Okay. All right. I uh, did. Was there a weird noise? From Kara after Dan called her his comfort blanket. What I, do you think? I, no, I don't think there was. I did see a post on Reddit, I believe, but I didn't get to see it. But yeah, allegedly there is. So let's hear it. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, check out what's going on here with the uh, with the comfort blanket. Okay, here we go. I know, I missed you too. I was like, I need my comfort blanket. I need the person that makes me feel better. <laughs> oh. Was, was that tough. that weird? That's tough. That weird. That's a stretch. Uh, I mean, obviously, she's not giving him the same type of affection back, right? Mm-hmm. I think this is a obvious he's too into her versus she's not that into him. Mm-hmm. She's not. She's not saying the same things to him. Yeah. At least we're not seeing it. How how could she, how could Dan tell if she's not that into him? He can't right now. What are some of the te- what are some of the tells, Nick? Well, I think this you're is... a da- you're a dating coach. Oh no, I'm not a dating coach. You never were a dating that's, coach. That's Franny. 
Yeah, I, that's I, Franny and Albert. You, n- you never Speaking gave anybody dating advice. No, I've given friends dating advice because I'm just an you advice weren't, machine. You weren't at one point developing a uh, a dating oh, website. That's also, what well, that was just for uh, to get my kicks off, I suppose. But yes. Uh, no, no, I have no advice. I have no dating advice. But if she, obviously if she doesn't show interest or she's not showing the same level of affection, that's a sign. And I think this is a sign. He's 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 the one pushing their narrative. He's the one pushing their uh, showmance. But okay. that's hard to see when you're that close to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It really is. And we're getting a lot of Canadian callers. Is that why Phil was uh, saying he's from Phil Canada? Phil from Canada. Does, I don't he, does he want a shot as a Canadian? Yeah, I don't know if it's in response to Will from America or... Uh, I don't, I don't know if that's, or that maybe that more people will identify with him as sort of like, hey, he's one of us. Yeah, us versus them. Us versus them. So okay. maybe uh, that's the thing. Uh, speaking of Will from America, that uh, he put something together. I, I don't know. Have you, have you noticed that this season that there's been a lot of banter in between the con- Survivor contestants and Jeff Probst when it comes to Jeff needs to take the idol back? Oh, yeah. Have Have you noticed that? Yeah. Have you noticed that? Uh, I think it was even uh, Shut Up Tim made this observation on Twitter. So we we went back to take a look at that. And we wanted to see exactly what's going on here. Why why are the contestants giving Jeff such a hard time when all he's trying to do is get uh, get that immunity idol so we can continue on with the show? Why are people really mucking up the works? Yeah, they're being snippy. They're being they're being a little bit. Uh, so this is uh, a something that we want to follow here in in the post merge. And now it's time for our favorite segment of the week. Jeff and the contestants make awkward banter about giving back immunity. Give me back immunity idol. You can borrow it for now. Come on. All right, let's get to today's immunity challenge. First things first, take back the idols. I don't want to give it back. Thank you. Thank you. First things first, take back the idols. Gabby gives it to me, Carl makes me come get it. I get it, don't wanna give it up. All right, first things first, Angelina, take back the idol, thank you. Borrowing it for now, borrowing it for now, borrowing it for now, borrowing it for now. Take spots, we'll get started. I get it. It's playful banter, but it, it's just like uh, when he says, uh, "Do you guys want brownies?" Or you, here's here's the coffee. <laughs> oh my god! There's, there's food reward. What? I wasn't expecting this. It's like, come on. We know the routine, and I get it. You're supposed to have some conversation. Yeah. What be should be the uh, like the, the reaction? I'll I'll be Jeff. All right. First things first. Nick gonna need that idol. Just toss it to him. So, Just throw it to him. Get yes, rid of it as quick as you can. You're like a Curtis Martin of like, uh, act like you've been there before. <laughs> yes, that's a Vince Lombardi quote, yes. is it not? Yes. Take the ball, hand it to the referee. You don't well, need to do some sort of like, uh, like, oh, well, uh, you know, you can you can b- borrow it, but I'm going to need some collateral. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now that that's the thing. now you. Wanna... I'll see you tonight, <laughs> immunity. Right. Now you want to do the opposite of that. Say like. Yes, uh, sir. N- yeah, sure. Yes, sir. You don't make a big deal of it, but you can be sarcastic now, being like, "Yeah, we didn't want this thing anyway." <laughs> oh, you like that? Yeah, you go the opposite direction now. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we're gonna lose anyway, so take it back. Yes. So, will the contestants, when it comes down to individual immunity, continue up these shenanigans? That's a great question. I forget. Jeff's like, "All right, Nick. First things first. We need that necklace back." Yeah. Uh, well, uh, you can't have it. Yeah, see, when I had the necklace, when I won the first time, I think he took it off. But my personality would be to take it off before I even get mm-hmm. there and just hand it to hand him. Hand it right in. Yeah. Mm. What's the big deal? Yeah. Let's get this show on the road. Let's get to the juice. <laughs> like, Je- all right, here you go, Jeff. I, just, I can't wait to win it again. No, I wouldn't That's, say no, it. It's not that? No. Like, like, good. Hey, let's give somebody else another turn. Give somebody else, yeah. Okay. And so we'll see if that if that continues to be a thing. So thank you to uh, Will from America again for uh, for putting that all together. Um, Tyson Apostle uh, wrote in, wants to know, am I still Nick's father's favorite all time survivor? I saw. Is this. that true? I saw this. He makes everything about himself, does he not? I mean, that's one of his things. That's a little rich for coming from me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, well, I mean, remember, my dad met him in Hawaii, and uh, I do I actually do think he likes Tyson's sense of humor. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but I did see Jen Manning 
Reply yes. to this. So this is first of all, this is about me, Jen Manning. This is about my feedback show. Mm-hmm. She said Tyson was her favorite player. Uh, Hopes to put that in her bio yeah. one day. And guess what? Jen is wrong. That's her uh, handle. <laughs> yes. So she's wrong. Yeah. I'm your favorite player, Jen. And I've met you before, Jen. Yeah. Um, let me just also thank uh, Drew had the question about the Brochacho's boat. It was an email, and so I, I found it now. Thanks, Drew. Sorry. Thanks, bud. You know, because then people get mad. People accuse me of like, hey, you stole my point. I emailed you. Uh, and uh, Everybody gets mad these days, huh? Everybody's very Don't want to be on that. the podcast. Yeah. The listeners, everybody. That's why. Uh, I make it so easy to for people to message me on my Twitter, <laughs> Pineapple Boy Twenty Seven. Okay, all right. Here's Qua- Here's Colin. Hi, Rob. So the formula for the number of relationships in a group of n people is n times n minus one divided by two. It has nothing to do with factorials, as Christian was saying during tribal council. Do you think CBS was aware of this error when they edited the episode? And do you think Christian is really as smart as he seems, or is he really? Just the brochacho disguised as a nerd. Love to hear your thoughts. Bye. <laughs> Factorials, technically speaking. Okay. What do you think of that? No, I have no idea about that. Do you have any idea about that? I'm not gonna. Colin, I'm not gonna say one person is wrong over the other because I have no idea if so, it's true. Okay. Or not. I, I, let me just. I, I let. I snuck up on everybody with that one because we have some really smart people. But you know, a lot of people yeah. think that like, oh, oh, what do you use this like? Oh, survivor talk. This is just like, uh, you know, lowest common denominator reality TV. No, we have some really smart people that listen to this podcast. I know. So, all right, let me give everybody a chance to hear that again so they don't have to hit the back 15 seconds button on their phone okay hi rob so the formula for the number of relationships in a group of n people is n times n minus one divided by two it has nothing to do with factorials as christian was saying during tribal council do you think cbs was aware of this error when they edited the episode and do you think christian is really as smart as he seems or is he really just a brochacho disguised as a nerd love to hear your thoughts bye (laughs) So what do you think, Nick? Do you, well, do you think was was Christian a bro- brochacho disguised as a nerd? Yes. Is he is he just faking no. faking that he knows what he's talking about? No, uh, I do not. I mean, he's a maker of robotics. Uh, he's an engineer, so mm-hmm. no. Maybe they're both right. Is that possible? It's math. I don't know. It's math. I don't know. So I guess both can't be right. Yeah. But see, that's their argument. I have no idea. Do you have any opinion on this? Do you know who's right? I have no idea. I have no idea. Yeah, I'm not and, that smart. Yeah. Yeah, and then we'll get a voicemail like, actually, that yeah, caller was wrong. And exactly. actually, uh, they're both wrong. It's actually it's actually this. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm, yeah. Nick, uh, let's talk about the, uh, the mayor of Slamtown a little bit. <sighs> mayor of Slamtown, John, huh? John. What do you think? What do you think of John? I like John, but... Uh, it's fascinating this season we're not seeing much of John or Dan. We're only seeing Dan because of Kara mm-hmm. or Kara, Kara, right? Kara. And, and uh, his idol find. So uh, I find it fascinating that we're not seeing a prof- much from a professional wrestler. Um, he's, he's visible, obviously, but uh, I like him. He's, he just seems like a nice guy. Is that why? He, like, he doesn't seem like he's causing any either conflict and or humor. Mm-hmm. Or he's not being active, I guess you want to say. So I think he's, he's more doing low key. A, a really good job in terms of wh- you know this is the best case scenario I think for him because he is uh, he is a guy who comes into the game with a huge target on his back for a couple of different reasons. Yeah, uh, one his size, and two that he is somebody who seems to have like uh, fame and notoriety, mm-hmm. and presumably along with that some degree of financial st- stability. Mm-hmm. So he's somebody that I think that you people would uh, want to target, but he has made the target on his back as small as humanly possible. Yeah, I would agree with that um, because nobody's brought up his name, right, as a possibility, at least uh, what we've been shown. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, and he's technically in a good spot, but we don't even know who he's really aligned with other than Dan and uh, Christian, right? But he was in those conversations. He was with with Natalie. Well, he was. He did talk to Natalie and had a good strategic conversation with her. Oh, and Angelina. He, he was with Angelina when he was the one to break the news to Angelina that it wasn't going to go her way, where she wasn't cursing at like, uh, you know, damn you, Mayor of Slamtown. I never get to vote out the person that I want to vote off. Do you think he's just a softer personality? Uh, is that why we're not seeing a ton of him? I think so. I mean, do you relate? More gentle. Do you relate at all to him, where you project an image, but then? 
maybe behind the scenes aren't exactly what your character is? Sure, there could be some resemblance or some comparison there made. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I don't know. It, it, you'd think he'd be entertaining in confessionals, though, don't you? You don't think he has been? Uh, I don't think he's been overwhelmingly entertaining in confessionals. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, there's nothing that really sticks out, right? Like where he's funny or where he's like uh, enlightening. or mm-hmm. He just seems like a kind, sweet soul. Mm-hmm. So yeah. maybe that's just why we haven't seen a ton. It's from interesting. Him. He's actually been funnier talking to the group, but maybe mm. more authentic and confessional. Mm. Okay, that can make sense. Yeah, he was pumped up for that merge feast. I'll tell you that right now. Yes, he was. Mac Rose. Yes, he was. Uh, He's cut. He was really pumped up. Uh, this is what he had to say for the merge feast. So this whole time I've been concerned about my macros. I've been losing my gains, and I look on the table, and there's got to be a hundred thousand calories at least. Okay, that's, that's, a, that's like a funny confessional. Um, yeah, he was ready to eat. He, he, him and Dan, you know what it is? Him and Dan don't remind me of like them being like too mischievous. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Sure. So I guess I would like to see that more from either John or Dan. But uh, yeah, no, John, John's, John's ready to eat, and hopefully he can win the next challenge with some food in his belly. Are you able to look at a, uh, like a Thanksgiving dinner, mm-hmm. and then you can just w- walk in and look at, 275,000 calories. <laughs> no, no idea. You have no, no idea. No, I think that's John's thing. And maybe even Dan's too, since he lost so much weight. But uh, no, I have no idea. I'll just go straight to the turkey, mac and but cheese, you know, and mashed potatoes. And, and, the, and that's not the macros that you know about, mac no, and cheese. Oh, no, yeah. I just do the mac and cheese, no macros. Yes. I don't know anything about that. Like, I'll eat unhealthy, so I don't know what I'm talking so about. So you don't know anything about diet and what the what the right foods to eat are no sure just eat healthy eat your greens eat your proteins fine but mm-hmm. no I'm, I'm not a stickler on that but eat what, eat what you want but you have very specific eating habits right i do i'm a little bit kid oriented yes that, that you that you know my wife will tell you that i'm very rigid in terms of mm. what i eat because when i when i'm when everything is going right for me and to be, you know, quite honest, it has not been uh, going right food wise in a couple of months here. But see, you still look good though. But when I, when when I I have everything lined up, I mean, I eat the same thing for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Right. Every single Your day. Your routine. I know what it is. I know how many calories that is, and I stay and I stay uh, stay on that routine. Right. But that's not what you do. Well, I mean, like I'll just eat the same things. Like I'll have chicken and rice, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm-hmm. Same thing for three meals. You chicken and rice for breakfast. Yeah. Well, I mean, I won't eat until like 11 sometimes. But anyway, mm-hmm. this is this is a boring conversation. But John, he got to eat. There's so much food. Uh, he was pumped up. And we got uh, that clue. Y- Potentially. B- yes. Yes. Well, well, let me talk about the uh, finish talking about the mayor's slam town. We okay. talk about the clue. Sorry. Um, John, he was so excited for 100,000 calories. Is it possible? Do you think that maybe the currency in slam town might be in macros and calories? That's very possible. I think Christian could uh, handle that for sure. Those numbers, Mm -hmm. he'd be able to handle calories, no problem. Yes, the factorials of all the calories. Yes, exactly that. Okay. Um, This is how excited that John was for this this merge feast. I see everything that I could hope to put in my face. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Wow. He was that pumped up. Wow, they really, they really, producers really did a great job (laughs) to feed John then. Good. <laughs> Glad he's fed. And then this was also, I thought this was something interesting from this challenge. Uh, this was uh, Jeff calling out, uh, you know, how well John is doing in this challenge. John looks like he's been doing this for years. Every day I do. Every day I do? Every day I do. Well, well come was on. He, was, that, was he joking or he's being serious? Like, no, uh, being serious. I mean, that, that was serious. But maybe, maybe that was a little bit of his wrestling persona coming every out. Every day I do, the swing that pendulum. Right. Round and round. In and that round. ring. Yeah. And he goes the other, and then with the other hand. Back yeah. to the ropes. Ambidextrous. Jumping off the top rope. Woo. Not everybody can do that. Dude, the guy is in shape. Yeah. He's, he's uh, no body fat, losing muscle. You're, so impre- I can understand. You're impressed. Yeah, I mean, he's just like Cole in a sense where you do get a little lightheaded. You do get uh, obviously starved. Mm-hmm. So, all right, we had this clue for mm. the uh, idol or alleged. Like, or alleged clue at the picnic, but it was something where it, w- it seemed so 
on the nose that they that they talked about it here in, in this episode. I know that typically with the merge, there's usually some kind of idol hidden somewhere, and sometimes you can find a clue at the feast. So I noticed that we all had little individual napkin holders, and I was like super conscious of like, what if there's something in it? And I also noticed the sign that came with the table that said, everything you need for the merge is right here. Well, does that also mean some kind of advantage? I don't know, but I didn't see anything hidden at the table. This could be survivor paranoia, right? Where you look for a sign in everything where there's not one. Okay. Smart Gabby. Do you think there's something there? Yeah, I mean, obviously this is a breadcrumb for us for the next episode or the next two episodes. Mm -hmm. My prediction is Gabby gets Christian. Christian and Gabby both figure it out together. They figure it out together. Yeah. Okay, that's a joint idol. And you yeah. think and you think that it's the popular theory popularized by DJ LaBelle Klein that yep. is going to be underneath that tree. Yep, beautiful tweet. He nailed it. Yep, I think it's going to be near that tree or under that tree, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, you, they wouldn't include it if that wasn't the case. I, I don't remember, uh, have they had something like that? Oh, they had uh, the acronym, didn't they, in Game Changers or Heroes versus, Heroes versus Hustlers, like where something was or it was a clue? Like every word, every other word was capitalized or something like that. Every new word. Sure, that was a U.S. Survivor season? Yeah, I think it was. Hmm. We, I know we didn't have, at least I don't believe we had a clue uh, at our merge. But uh, we'll see. I'll yeah, see we'll if, see. We'll, we'll see if see it comes if, true. We'll see if the chat has that. Uh, you want to take some calls from the listeners of the uh, the podcast? Phone call, Tom. Yeah, you want to try? You want to give that a shot? Let's do it. Right, let's oh wait, see. can we speak about how I'm, I you brought me under here? Brought me here under false pretenses. What was the false pretense? Well, we were going to co-host with somebody else. Yeah, the problem was that I couldn't find somebody who was willing to uh, to do that on the uh, on the podcast. How many people said no? Uh, well, I didn't ask, but I felt like that anyway. I couldn't figure out a person oh, that would be... Oh, didn't even ask. W- that would be up to do it, We're making it public now. Okay. Next All right. season. Next season. If somebody is willing, then... Because uh, I, I would love to have you you come in and co-host the podcast yeah, with the guests. Yeah, we could do it together. And then uh, I believe Nicole said a woman would uh, be more than happy to. Well, I just didn't want to put a woman on the spot of like that it's like, hey, these two guys are, are, are calling... Uh, like uh, I, I don't know, I, I don't know what the I you know, know, the, I know to make it. I, I, I didn't want to make it uncomfortable for anybody. Whoever wants to join, I think it would be funny, but I don't want to make it like you know where the like, uncomfortable. Uh, you know, here's my wingman, and now we're oh, calling up people. Oh, I see. So, like but, setting up a blind date. Right, right. Gotcha. So, so I, if there was somebody like, for instance, like if you if there was somebody that, if you had a friend that was a survivor, oh. and then they said, yeah, no, that would be great. I would love to have Nick uh, be oh, there, but right. I don't want to uh, like uh, just ambush somebody. Just to ambush yeah. somebody of Got like you. Okay. you know okay all right maybe we'll find something uh, so we'll we'll see but Phone it, calls. look that I'm, I'm look I'm working on trying this stuff out with T Bird that you could oh, be like the in studio person T Bird T Bird yeah like when me and T Bird called up Terry Dietz the other day so many people want T Bird on another second chance season yeah and you don't no what what is T Bird gonna say in confessional. Oh, yep, I like that person. Oh, yep, I love Did that person. Did you watch person. her first season? Uh, yes, but obviously I don't remember. Yeah. But so she just loves everybody, she, right? Uh, that's what she wants you to think. Oh, she'll just backstab that, you. Look, she's a tough player. She's a, t- she's a tough player, don't they? She's a kid. You know, if I'm condescending a, to her. She'll be a killer out there. Oh, you no, but I still love on. Nick. Don't He's such a sweetheart. Yeah, well, and then after the game, she'll go back to loving you. But don't, uh, you know, uh, sleep on T Bird at your own peril. Okay. That's true. Uh, let's uh, call her. Are you there? No. Let's see. Wait, can I do Bradley's joke? You go, for, go. Sure. Must be Chelsea. Sure. Okay. Uh, let's try Not this as one good. more time. Call her. Uh, call her. Are you, are, you, are you there? Nope. Must be Allison. Yes. <laughs> okay. Let me try this. Just kidding, Allison. Okay, I let's, like you. let's see one more. Uh, all right, last, last caller. I'm going to go to uh, another caller here in a second. Uh, let's, okay, let's try, let's try another one. Again, this is the kind of stuff that, uh, you know, it's... We try this is what it. happens. It's live. Try some new stuff. Okay, uh, let's go to Barry here, okay? What up, Barry? All right, here is uh, Barry. Barry, how are you? Hey, Barry. Yeah, we hear you. Okay, Barry, you're on with Rob and Nick. What's going on? Hey, what's up? Doing great. What's up?
Yeah, this would have been a great question if we could have uh, got to this with Elizabeth the other day, where did you know, Elizabeth, when you were in that immunity challenge, that if you don't win, that you are likely to be the person to go home? Do you think that somebody uh, that uh, unless you uh, explicitly know, should you be throwing? Yeah, no, I, I do believe that. Yes, that's just it's just a hard thing to know. It's a hard thing to know 100%. But you do have to take that gamble. You do have to take that risk. Because if you come in second or third, everybody else is out and they're watching you. You're on stage, basically. So yeah, it raises your profile, just like you said. So mm -hmm. I think it's a risk that you have to take to throw the challenge if possible. Okay. All right, thanks so thanks. much, Barry. All right, take care. Bye. All right. So you like that? That was okay. good. Right, That's cool. Yeah. I like this technology. Yeah. All right. Let's see. We're going to do uh, one. Well, let's try one more. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, let's see if we have. Uh, all right. Yes. Jessica. What's up, Jessica? Good. How's it going? All right. Jessica, what's new? We have a question for Nick. Oh, that's a tough one. Yeah, because I am on the opposite side. I think you have to be vulnerable without the waterworks. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? You have to be vulnerable. You have to be like, oh, I'm afraid. I'm nervous. Just like you are. I'm scared of this situation. But I don't think you can cry too much because Dawn ran into that trouble. Did she not? Mm -hmm. uh, ran into that situation. Um, how many other criers have there been in Final Tribal Council where they didn't win? Lisa Welchel. Lisa Welchel. Um, yeah, so I think it's an uphill battle. Or even like a Hannah. I mean, I don't think mm -hmm. Hannah cried that much, but she did have panic attacks, which were very visible. Mm -hmm. um, I do think it hurts you, and I think you just have to be vulnerable just enough, but without the visible nature of crying. Does that make sense? What do you think? Hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah. It, it's tough. I, I think that where it, people can really get into trouble with this is where people look at you as you're somebody that I'm taking care of, where That's Nick is, is having a breakdown every other day. And I got to like, all right, Nick, come here. They're there. And then you backstab me. Yeah, because you're now, saving the other person. Right. Where it's like, OK, well, now I you you know, I have been there for you. And now you end up turning around on me where now if, you know, if somehow like, by, you know, I get taken out and Nick goes on an immunity run, like, you know, happy to vote for him. But now if Nick, you know, uh, you know, uh, get, you know, shanks me at some point, then I'm really not going to appreciate that. I think that's a perfect way to say it. You're Jessica's rock or vice versa. And then the other person just throws that rock in the ocean. And then the other person is going to feel upset. That's all it is. Okay. I think you're right. All right. Jessica, thanks for the call. Okay. All right, Thank take you. care. Bye. Okay. All right. Uh, Great questions. Okay. Good stuff. All right. So, so, all right. Sorry, I put Barry. I put I put Barry back. Apologize Barry's about Barry's back. Okay. Sorry about that. So. Okay. <laughs> There you go. All right. All right. Sorry about that. Let me just go ahead and uh, okay. All right, Nick. So much else to get to here. We're going to talk about some social media coming up Great. in a moment. Anything else from the episode? Um, just the overall season, I would say. Um, I, I put out a tweet on purpose so we could talk about it. But like, I do think the producers have corrected course. I do believe they've made this season uh, much better. And I think it's because of the storytelling. It's the people now. It's the characters now. It's not the twists. It's not the idols. Mm-hmm. Because I think, do you think uh, they put up these tent poles or these anchors down? Like, hey, these are all these idols that are in play. These are all these advantages or twists. And now we're going to build some of the story around these things. Um, whereas now in this season, whether it's on purpose or luckily, because Dan hasn't you had to use his idols, mm -hmm. we have less of that. And now we have more character development. Yeah. More conflict, more... Because, like, isn't it a good story... 
knowing the character's goals and obstacles or uh, motivations and obstacles? So uh, I don't know how much of this was by design and how mm-hmm. much it has worked out this way. Because, uh, yes, last season in Ghost Island, that the idea of Ghost Island was that there were, you know, in, in – inordinate amount of objects that got thrown into the game right um as the game progressed so there was way too much stuff um but heroes healers hustlers you know it just so happened that an idol got played almost every single tribal council uh so i think like seven or eight idols got played in that season where i don't think we've seen the hidden immunity idol get played in this season so people have it in their pockets you know dan has two idols davy has one and they're not being flushed. They're not being played. So more idols aren't... I mean, there's three idols in the game, but right. it's just it has not been a big factor, and they're not sort of being put back into circulation where people are finding an idol every single episode. Carl has the idol nullifier again. It's not the kind of thing that he's playing and flushing. And then we had this new advantage, which was put into the game, and there's nobody has happened to find it. So I don't think that uh, production is really taking their foot off the gas in terms of let's put a bunch of stuff out there I just think that the players have been hesitant to use the things that they have. And so because of that, there's been sort of uh, just it, it's been slowed down in terms of our perception of it. But and do you think that's benefited this yes. season? Yes, yes, I do. Same. Because I think rather than, you know, OK, let's see, you know, somebody going out and finding an idol for two or three minutes in an episode. We're seeing, you know, more, uh, you know, more discussion of, you know, what's going on at the camp. Right, and I totally agree. Yeah, and yeah, uh, this is a terrible example, but like Ozark, right? Have you seen Ozark? I have not. Oh, you should. Um, but again, those are people with, I mean, every story is like this, but people with goals, people with obstacles in their way. And it's not material things, it's not objects, it's not idols, it's not whatever. So I just think it's benefited, and I'm happy to see it. It's beautiful, it's a okay. great season. Okay. Uh, let me see if I have any other uh, clips that I haven't played from this episode. Um, I do think that Christian uh, does a thing where he um, just like explains uh, what something is, but he makes it sound like uh, he's coming up with a new thing. Um, this was in this episode that Alec um, w- Alec had a conversation with, uh, with Christian about the uh, being in an alliance with him. Okay, uh, and then Christian uh, sort of explain explain back what uh, this was. I have your back. Like people aren't going to suspect it. So what you're saying is that this should be a full line of communication that we should nurture, but on the down low. Hundred percent. So that way. 100%. So and I'm totally on board with that. Okay. Yeah. So basically, yes, uh, an alliance. Yeah, exactly. But you have to give them credit, right? Yeah. The way the way you use words, the way you phrase things matters so greatly Mm -hmm. to somebody else right but it christian uh do you want to go to have lunch tomorrow like ah okay so a meal at a afternoon time pre-scheduled where we'll both eat and then enjoy each other's company over a meal yes so yes i like that yes so Mm. okay but is he doing it on purpose i don't know I, I, i think that he explains things because if he's doing it on purpose, that's amazing. Because I, I, I think that's uh, a quirk that maybe you can become attracted to. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, who's this guy? This... I mean, maybe that's the kind of thing. If I, if I suggest to you... Uh, it's too straightforward. You know, hey, Nick, you want to be in an alliance? Wait, what? Nick, would you like to do a podcast? And then you just sort of like explain back to me the definition of a podcast. I'm like, boy, Nick really gets me. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, I, obviously, uh, everybody, not everybody, a lot of people do like Christian. Mm-hmm. So... Obviously, he has a way with words, and I do think it works. I do think it benefits. Everything is phrasing in Survivor. Everything is how you come across in Survivor, and Christian's doing the perfect job of that. Okay. Uh, Speaking of Alec, Alec had a couple Mm. things uh, from this episode. Uh, One, uh, Alec, uh, did he? was this a page out of the Mayo Jar playbook? How dare he? Gabby, will you date me? Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll double date you. uh, Whoa! Yeah, that will kinda, you date me? That kind of is, and I, then she clever. that he wanted her to pass him the dates. Right? No, it was clever. You like that line? Charming. That was good. It was charming. I, you have you to like give that. it to him. That and she ate line. it up. He ate it up. They both playing off each other. Yeah, there might be something there. Maybe. All right. Then Alec explained what the merge is like. Nick, mm. 
Let me hear your take on this. On pre-merge, you're at like the pre-game, the pre-party. Everyone's still getting ready, doing their hair. And then you come here and it's 13 of us and this is like the party. This is what everyone RSVP'd for. Now you can pick up the girls, you can bro out with the dudes, like this is it. Now you can pick up the girls. Now you can bro out with the dudes. <laughs> this is it. This is the real party. Pre-merge, that's the pre-party. It's it's a great analogy. Uh, it reminds me of Jay. It reminds me of Taylor. It reminds mm-hmm. me of that. Uh, it's it's funny. It's good for the younger people. I like it. Mm-hmm. Um, it works. It works. I have nothing to say. It was a charming confessional. Yeah, I like it. Okay, um, I liked. Uh, we got Mike White's coffee order in this episode. I need a soy latte stat. That was funny. You like that it? That was funny because it's very like LA, I feel like. Very LA. Yeah. Uh, is that a soy latte in a saucer of milk? Oh, yeah. Well, they'll drop it. <laughs> yeah. Be careful with that. All right. Uh, Nick, we're going to get to the uh, Survivor social media, but first, let me take a moment and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast here. And I'm very excited to talk about Beach Body On Demand. Beach Body On Demand. I was waiting all week till you were here to talk about Beach Body On Demand, the easy to use streaming service that gives you instant access to a wide variety of super effective workouts that you can do from the comfort of your living room. Now, Nick, if somebody, if people want to have Nick Majorano come to their house, personally train them, give them a workout any time of the day, that would be ridiculously expensive, right? Uh, yeah, it's a hundred bucks an hour, but a hundred dollars an hour. That's not ridiculous. I mean, that's well, for uh, beach body on demand. How about if you got a for free, a free what? trial of beach body on demand, do the workouts anytime. You don't have to hear Nick talk about how, oh, that's not a good time of the day for me. I'll get stuck yeah, in the traffic. Sure. I have something going on that day. Forget it. Anytime you want, you can be on beach body on demand anywhere in the world. Go ahead, and you can be using Beachbody on demand. They've got a great offer for our listeners. Just text the, the text the word Rob to thirty 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 on your phone, and you can try it out for two weeks uh, with the Beachbody on demand trial membership. Thirty thirty thirty. Text the word Rob. They've got a ton of great programs. P ninety X Insanity, twenty one day fix T twenty five. Pio Hip Hop Abs Three Week Yoga Retreat with Vitas Bushkaskis. Oh, that's not even a joke. Whoa, he's really on it. I'm not on it. Well, you're not on it. I mean, you could that's... you could be on it. No, no. Well, text thirty thirty and thirty. Rob... Oh. Rob to thirty thirty thirty. Oh, okay. Trainers like Sean T, Shailene Johnson, Tony Horton, Vitas Bushkaskis. They've got the best programs from bodybuilding to weight training to cardio. Uh, high intensity interval training, yoga, even dance workouts. You do it on your schedule. I like to do core to force, Nick. Ooh, you got a little core action in there, huh? Core to force, okay. yeah. I try to, you know, I've been. You got good posture the way you're sitting. No, well, the, the, it's strong it's abs. Not really a strong posture. Lower back. Yeah, let's. It's like a cardio kickboxing. So, oh, like, okay. You know. Uh, be ready. Be ready for anything. It's the best deal in fitness, and the listeners of Rob is a podcast can try it for free. One million people are currently on Beach Body on demand. So go ahead and give it a shot. Get that special free trial membership, including the 14 day results plan, where you can lose up to nine pounds in the first two weeks when you text the word Rob to 30 30 30. You'll get access to the entire platform for free, all the workouts, the nutritional information, the results plan to get you super fast results and support totally free. Text the word Rob to 30 30 30. All That's right. the better deal. I don't have a promo code with Rob no, for free. No, no that no. is the better deal by far. The, that is a, uh, a a better deal. All right. So let's go ahead and bring in the, what's going on in the world of uh, the Survivor social media. And so many people send me the uh, some, some jingles. And let me see if I can uh, get one for you here. Uh, how about this one? What about Johnny Johnny D. Silvera? What does he have to say? Oh, they're gonna say Johnny. Carol. Tweets, baby, tweets. Survivor tweets. They're better than not finding a clue at the merge feast. Tweets. I mean, that's better, right? Hey, it's better than I could do. So props. Yeah. Why? That I not heard like you on, on the bar. I've heard you on the wand off. Yeah, I'm not great though. Uh, yeah. th- thankfully, I have uh, help. <laughs> Bob from Columbus. <laughs> you have help from the great uh, Bob from Columbus. All right. All right here's uh, Phil from Canada has one too. Tweets, baby, tweets. Survivor tweets. 
They're better than Nick Marano. This thing thinks for sex that he needs. Tweets. I Wait, what did he say? Something about uh, sex that he needs? Yeah, that's what I thought he said. But uh, Tweets, baby. Tweets. Survivor tweets. They're better than Nick Marano. This thing thinks for sex that he needs. Tweets. Listing things for sex that he needs? Ah, uh, that yes. would make that sense. Was, was that with Lindell? Yes. Yes. No, yeah. It's, no, that was with Bob. That was with Bob. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, we're getting, right. yeah, Lindell. So Lindell gets in there with the sex. Uh, now, I know you've been very upset that you don't have a Wiggler's Wombats hat. Uh, I know. Yes. Where is it? Okay. Do you want me to go get it for you? You want me to go get present you with one on the podcast? That would be nice, would it not? Okay. All right. Well, then I have it's, to. Can, can you host the podcast? I can for, definitely host the okay. podcast. All right. Give me thirty seconds to go. Thirty get a, seconds. A, a, a hat for you to wear. What are you going to talk about with the uh, with the audience? Do you have a take that you want to set up? Well, I'm going to talk about how long it's got. Uh, how long it's been to get this hat? I mean, I think you could do better than that. Oh. Oh. Okay. Well, maybe something about. How about this? Let me. I'll play you a voicemail. Oh. And then and then and then you answer it. Okay? You basically just insulted me that I couldn't come up with something on my own to fill the air. Okay. Here, here's Brent the Shower Man. Go. Hello, Mayo Jar and Rob. This is Brent the Shower Man. Nick, Rob has dubbed you the Mayo of Slamtown, and you were also sort of the Mayo of Ponderosa after Neil was eliminated from the jury. As we now have our first juror of this season, I'm wondering. Which condiment do you most strongly associate with Elizabeth? Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Which condiment do I associate Elizabeth with? Oh, boy. Well, she's like a little spicy mustard, I would say. She can get a little irritated. She can get a little combative. I don't like mustard. Uh, not to say I don't like Elizabeth, but that's how I framed it. Um... Yeah, she's got a little color to her, a little flavor to her. So I'm going to say spicy mustard for Elizabeth. Okay, spicy mustard. All right, Nick. So I have here for you that you did win a wand off last I, I didn't know if you wanted this, but here I, I'm happy to have. <laughs> you didn't to, know. For, you're a liar. I didn't, I didn't know. Here you go, Nick. A Wiggler's oh. Wombat's official hat. For winning a wand off at some point earlier this season. Uh, don't act like you don't remember when it was. Wow, this is fantastic. Mm hmm. Yeah. I won't put, well, I'll put it on a little bit over the headphones. Okay. All right. There you go. He is, uh, the guy, that's a good look. It's a cool look. Of course look. it is. If anything looks good on me, kid. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks, uh, don't, buddy. don't sit too up in the chair because uh, yeah. have your uh, that the, the camera is set at a certain height, so the, don't get uh, too. I'll just, I'll just slouch like this. Okay, that's good. That would, the, the listeners appreciate that. Okay, all right. Remember, I have a bad back, Rob. Oh, sorry. Okay, it's however you're going to be comfortable. I'm good. Okay, all right, Nick. Let's talk about what's going on in the world of Survivor social media. Okay, um, let's see, uh, Lirsa said what's up Lears? Lirsa said i just finished last night's survivor episode i guess i'll be sitting next to texas bluegrass at the reunion i'm proud of how you play you were honest and did your best it is um an, i'm honored to call you my friend and my survivor sister hashtag let's have fun at the reunion uh excuse me that's great how why many, why you have to take the paper? Well, I wanted to see how many likes it got because No, it doesn't say that. That's a very that's, sweet thing to that say. It doesn't say that, yeah. Uh well, that's very heartwarming. Lee Lirsa was a great fun character, and I'm gonna stick with Dominic Abate. She's not gonna like this. Abate. She, uh how do you say his last name? It's Abate. 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 Oh. Yeah, I think I knew I think I once knew an Abate. But anyway, Abate, Dominic, I'm sorry. Uh that she does look like Aubrey. Yes. Okay. He put up a tweet. I did see it, and uh, I agree with you. Um, mm -hmm. Lirsa, I know you're not going to be happy about that for whatever reason, <laughs> but I do think it's true. Um, yeah. Okay. But look at it. I don't have a ton of uh, Aubrey quotes. I feel like this is like where I would normally play like an Aubrey uh, uh, sound drop, but yeah. for whatever reason, uh, I think she's like just like long. Yeah, uh, it's too it's too John Cochran like. Yeah, yeah. I don't have a ton of uh, Cock. I don't think I have any Cochran quotes either. There, see exactly. Yeah. Not like nailed it on the head. Uh, the bomb doors are open. Oh, Prepare to fire. Debbie, fire at me, baby. <laughs> yeah. 
Have you kept in touch with Debbie? No, no, I have not. She has not kept in touch with me either. Mm -hmm. But if we saw each other, we'd be cordial and loving. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. You know who was pumped up about the merch? Uh, John. No, T-Bird. Oh, T-Bird was pumped up about something. Are you kidding me? Yeah. What? She said, merge, baby, survivor, nice spread, at Jeff Probst. She'd be pumped out, pumped up about a volcano erupting <laughs> and wiping out a village. She no, would, yeah, no, she, she would, would not. She'd she be not. pumped up about anything. Yeah. All right. Well, that's nice. Well, uh, And she was also pumped up. Mason Dixon together again. Hashtag love fest. Hashtag Christian Ubicki. Hashtag Kentucky underscore Nick Wilson. Hashtag survivor. Is she doing it to be funny at this point? No. No. Okay. Well, I like T-Bird. Yeah. Um, <sighs> Dina Bennett tweeted. Oh, uh, I like Dina. I really like Dina in that season. Uh, I did Amazon? too. I did too. Uh, I would Your love season? for her to come on the podcast. Uh, at trial dog 67. She said, best thing about a survivor merge, brand new buffs and salt. Seriously. We stole salt and took it back to camp and made a salt lick. Somebody, tw- uh, tweeted me about this. I have no recollection of this happening. She's making it up? No, I don't think she's making it. Uh, maybe it was a, pri- a private salt lick or I was not involved in the salt licking. She might be lying. I don't. Why, why would somebody lie For about that? For attention. No, no, that, that's not. The, uh... Oh, she's never coming on this podcast. You just accused her of lying. <laughs> I did. I, I just attention. like, uh, was there like a salt lick behind my back? Uh, I mean, well. not that I might be. What might have happened, and I don't have the greatest memory at this point, Nick. Uh, there there might have been people saying like, hey. We're all going to go lick this salt. And I said, you do you, boo-boo. <laughs> I, I'm out. You, did, you didn't I'm out say on, any of that. You do I'm you, I'm out boo-boo. on uh, being part of the community salt lick. <laughs> and then just forgot that it existed. <laughs> all right. But I don't, I don't recall all anybody right. doing this. Well. Okay. Um, Shane Powers. Oh, tweeted. Shane's back in business. Okay. Yeah. He did not like something from this episode. Oh, Shane didn't like something. So we have T-Bird liking something and mm-hmm. Shane not liking something. Okay. I'm yeah. surprised. Yeah. Um, she, uh, uh, yeah, T-Bird liked everything. <laughs> yep. Shane Powers said, uh, to all past at Survivor CBS players, doing the whole get up and talk to each other routine is Bush League and stupid. <sighs> what do you think? So negative. What do you think? Is that Bush League and stupid? No, no. It's not Bush League just stupid. or stupid. No, it's neither. It's just how things are going now. And obviously Jeff and the producers like it. So he's just uh, stuck in the older school survivor, which is understandable. Just like how uh, former legends of sports <laughs> are pissed at the younger generation playing basketball or whatever it is. He's just, mm-hmm. he, he can't accept the new ways of survivor. Mm-hmm. But I don't think he has to call it stupid. Yeah, he didn't like it. No. Uh, Kat Ederson, uh, she does not often tweet about Survivor, oh. but she shows up on the Survivor tweets this week. I'm sure, she's got a good one. Kat Ederson said, uh, first individual immunity challenge, what's up, kookster, at Troy underscore Zan? What? Yeah. What is that? I guess he won an individual immunity. Yeah. and then she, she, she couldn't just text him that? No. <laughs> that was a tweet. Like, it's a personal text. It's, it's like basically texting him. <laughs> she also tweeted, cry me a river, hashtag David's. Didn't she cry in her seasons? Uh, probably. At one point? Probably at some point. Probably at some point. Okay. She uh, should go lose a shoe in the ocean again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Brian Cordan tweeted, uh, Angelina is about to become even more like RC, isn't she? I think that maybe oh. that was, I think that, that uh, Brian Cordan thought she was going to be the first person voted out of the merch. Oh. And you don't appreciate those types of uh, no, well, humor. Well, when we have the first one out season and I'm on it with RC and whoever else, Jessica... But uh, Jessica Johnson, that is. Mm-hmm. Um, no, but Angelina does a. Angelina's not gonna like this. Remind me of RC, and what she's not gonna like is she reminds me of Anna. Anna Kate. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. Angelina, you're not like that, and you don't have her viewpoints. But, mm-hmm. but uh, where has she been lately? I feel like that she's been. Oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, that has she just been taken off of all of the <laughs> social media platforms that I go to? <laughs> Probably. I don't know. I don't follow up on her, but uh, I think Angelina. I, Angelina is a great character, though. Yeah. I am enjoying her. I, I went to her Twitter this morning to see if she had any take on the episode. She did not. I yeah. don't believe. Not that when I saw. Yeah. Um, I said she was verified on uh, so on one of those other websites, right? Who Anna Kate? Yeah. Oh, one of those other websites. What does that mean? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 
I got one, one, I, one, one, of those, one of the ones that one one of the ones I I heard about recently on uh, the, NPR. One yeah. of those flight risks <laughs> verified. No, I'm just kidding. She's not. Okay, let's not spread rumors. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Can I take back that Angelina reminds me of Anna? That's not nice. I mean, that's not. I I can't take it out of the video. Ah, uh, shoot. Okay. All right. All right. Um, PG. Our, our good friend PG says, this is honestly the best season of Survivor in a long time. Interesting, dynamic people, fun confessionals that aren't only about strategy, strategic gameplay coming from several people, not just one person dominating. Congrats to the cast and the editors and the producers. Total, 100% agree. Yeah. That's why this season's so good. Cast well, okay. and the producer. I mean, I think it might be the producers, to be honest. All right. So let me ask you this, Nick. So do you suck. feel like that will will this momentum continue? Or mm. do you think that the shoe is going to drop at some point <laughs> oh, on this please season? Don't, please don't. Please don't drop. Well, someone's going to find the idol underneath the tree, right? Let's pretend it's Gabby or Christian. Mm -hmm. Dan's got two, so let's see if he uses two at like some point. Like, everybody's feeling good. But here's the thing, though. That's, that becomes exciting because it's not it's not every single darn episode, or it's not every single other episode. It's, it's okay, it's a clean pre-merge of no idols, but there were some found, so now we have these breadcrumbs that could lead into something after the merge. Now we're like, oh, shoot, when is the shoe going to drop? And maybe that's a better thing because we haven't had it every other episode. So it's, I think it's going to be actually refreshing when idols do come into play. That's what I'm going to say. Okay. All right. You heard it here first. Alexis Maxwell. Oh, we always love Alexis Maxwell. Tweets. <laughs> oh, I love Alexis Maxwell, but her tweets. Yeah, Alexis underscore Maxwell. Just watched Survivor. One, Tribal was surprising. Two, I now think Angelina has never seen the show. Three, there are so many likable people this season. So many people to root for. Uh, she's right on two of those things, but Angelina has definitely seen the show. Obviously, mm -hmm. she's a fan. So watch it, Alexis. Yeah. Stand back. <laughs> She's more of a fan than you are, Alexis. And I like Alexis. <laughs> so shove it, Alexis. You're not going to be on second chance. Angelina will. Oh, wow. She took her spot? She took, yeah. Well, Angelina's a Latina, is she not? A brunette Latina, Angelina. And so is Alexis, I believe. Wow. So, Angelina, you I'm get that spot. I've determined it. It's yours. Wow. Okay. Are you, are you tapped in? Could, could you imagine a tribe of like Angelina, Bradley, uh, Chris Noble, or just like condescending people? I was going to put myself What's in there, the but theme? that would have been. What's the theme then? Well, it's, I think, <laughs> come on, Rob. Okay. I sound like Johnny Fairplay right now. But uh, <laughs> how? Well, because he's always pitching all oh, legend season. Let's do a legend season. It's got to be heroes versus villains, too. Let's do all that because I want to be on it. So anyway, I'm going to sound like him. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like your Johnny Fairplay impression. Uh -huh. uh, so, uh, okay, they did blood versus water for 27 and then 29. Okay. Mm -hmm. They did 28 uh, BBB and then they did 32 BBB. Yeah. So if they're going to do second chance 31, why can't they do it sooner than later? <laughs> I don't know, but uh, it's great I had, season. I had, I had a shower thought today. Ooh, what was it, Rob? The next season of Survivor. This Is this going to be a joke? First, tell me if it's no, going to be a joke. No, it's not going to be a joke. Okay. It's not going to be a joke. People might think it's a joke, but I'm okay. being dead okay, serious. I'm ready. I'm ready. Season 39 of Survivor. Okay. Are you, ready, are you ready to know what the theme is? Let me digest it. Okay, digest it. Okay. And tell me if I'm wrong Wait, tell me if I'm wrong wait are this. you going to give me 39 and 40 or just 39? No, I'm just going to give you 39. Okay. I'm not even going to think about 40. Okay. The next season of Survivor, season 39 is... David versus Goliath 2. Oh, my God. Oh, that's on the ball, probably. <laughs> Shoot. And if it's not season 39, it's 41. So, wait, this is season 37. Yeah. 37, so wait. How many seasons? As a person who is on Brains versus Beauty versus Brawn 2. I'm counting, like, meanwhile, Christian would have, I'm counting on my fingers, meanwhile, Yeah, Christian what, what are the uh, factorials? So, 28, so this is 37, so then, you're right, it would be season 41, I'm going to say. 39 or 41. 41. No, okay, I'm so it's 41. 41. Lock it in, lock it in. Season 41. Let's do a fan vote for 39. David versus Goliath reinvented the way people think about Survivor. Now, a whole new cast of Davids and Goliaths try to see who is the advantage and and what is the advantage? And two and do idols. do they have what it takes? Two idols would create a super idol. <laughs> Just like on BBB2. <laughs> Dude, yeah, no, people I agree. People are laughing. You know it's true, people. 
I agree. Actually, that's a good call. I think it will happen. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, but again, though, Millennials versus Gen X hasn't happened, but I do think this is the better theme compared to that. So I th- I'm going to agree. 41, I'm putting it down for. People have said oh, David versus Goliath is honestly the best season of Survivor in a long time with interesting, dynamic people, fun confessionals that aren't only about strategy, strategic gameplay from several people, and not just one person dominating. Congrats for, to the cast, editors, and producers. This she, fall, she, she, David <laughs> versus Goliath 2. Excuse me, I just burped. But PG is straight. Uh, she's head on. Uh, mm-hmm. Nailed it. Uh, the pro- I think it's the producers, though. I think it comes down to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Storytelling, baby. All right. Carolyn Rivera said, This season just keeps getting better and better. Loving at David versus Goliath. Oh, I like <laughs> Carolyn. I actually think she should have won Worlds Apart. Oh, don't at me. But um, I think I think Chrissy has taken her reign. I also do think Chrissy should have won uh, Heroes vs. Heroes vs. Hustlers. So you're on top of all... I feel like that you have, like, all... I feel like you have all of the different Survivor casting breakdowns, and you have, like, a pecking order of uh... who's who, who's on top of... Oh, watch. Okay, well, like... Uh, Listen. Cochran, you're down now. Here's Christian. Put you on top of my magnet board. First of all, I don't have a magnet board. Alexis, uh, you're down uh, another peg. Yep, Angelina Angelina, goes Angelina up. took your spot. Yep. Ken, you're coming down here. I'm going up there. <laughs> Dan, you're coming back down. Chris Noble, I'm right next to you, buddy. Is it magnets or do you have a Trello board? What's a Trello board? It's like a website for making lists and oh, organizing no, projects. I, no, I don't have that, but that would actually be I'll show very you how to handy. use it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I've got everybody's cast photo in my room, <laughs> like 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 a crazy wall, like a police officer or detective's wall. Like who's gonna be on the next returnee season? <laughs> All right, Stephen Fishback, he took over the Survivor Instagram account. Have you been asked to take over the Survivor no, Instagram? No, what the hell is that about? No, I excuse me, it. what the heck is that about? Have I didn't you been get asked? asked. No, no. I don't know how do you get asked. I don't even know if I want to be asked at this point because Fishback was asked. Mm-hmm. I'm just kidding, yeah. Fishback. Uh, yeah, I don't get how they're picking people. So. I don't know either. I don't know either. It seems a little unfair. It seems a little biased, whoever's picking. How is it biased? Unless it's a raffle. If it's a raffle, that's fair. I, think it's, I don't think it's a raffle. Well, it should be. I'm not sure if it's a, a, a raffle. Um, but Steven tweeted out uh, some quotes from the episode. He talked about how Angelina did not even feel safe uh, in, in her own home anymore. Uh, this is Angelina's quote. But I'm I pissed. I mean, he makes me super nervous now. Like, now I don't even feel like safe in my own home, in my own land. <laughs> See, <laughs> it's a little over dramatic. Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? She doesn't feel safe. She doesn't feel safe. Uh, this was also very dramatic from Angelina. Given that my husband serves in the Marine Corps, the way that I'm angling the conversation to the Goliath tribe is really based off of military tactics. And it kind of gets them fired up like, yeah, we're going into battle, right? So it's intentional language that I'm using to get my tribe in the game. That's intentional language. Would you be pumped up if you heard that, uh, Pep? If, if she used that intentional language on me. What's you that? would what's be. That? What's that? You're lying. N- NLP, Nick? What does that mean? I think that's what that's called. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, would you be pumped up for real? Sure. Joel, sure. you're such a liar. Especially if, if I heard that, so many dr- times. that snare drum. Oh, uh, you didn't. You didn't hear it because it's not there on the island. Yeah. Well, she tried. She tried. That's a thing. You, you can't. You can't get pissed at people who try. Mm-hmm. And she tried. Yeah. Stephen also on the Instagram he made a good First point of- about the uh, Angelina calling out Elizabeth for her uh, bad strategy of telling everybody to uh, vote for Angelina at that tribal council when Elizabeth was definitely going home. Uh, this was this was that moment. Just to jump in here, since this is kind of us, right? Um, like. This is just bad strategy. <laughs> uh, uh, oh. She was in a tough spot. She dug yeah. herself a big hole. What are you going to do? Yeah, you can't. Uh, I, you, there's almost no answer. You just don't want to shut up. Mm-hmm. But it's so hard to shut up, I guess. It's tough. Uh, that, yeah, that was cringeworthy. Mm-hmm. But it happens. It happens when you try and make a move. You try and get out, stick your neck on the line. That's fine. Uh, Steven gets to watch these episodes ahead of time, does he not? I'm not sure what his Doesn't schedule he and is, Wiggler, what his workflow don't, is. Don't these press people get to watch these earlier, and then they get to come up with these clever tweets? 
24 hours in advance. Yeah, I'm not sure. You'd have to check in with their... Uh, oh, I'll check in with it. <laughs> check in on that. I'm going to take over the Instagram. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Jacob Derwin said, okay. I had Kalo Kalo written in my journal as my pregame, as a merge name I wanted to suggest. Really? Well... Is Kalo Kalo Star or is, is it just it, Kalo? Is it Kalo is Star? Is it Star Star? Star Star. Star Star. Like, are we dancing with the Kalos or dancing with the Kalo Kalos? Funny. Kalish Kalish? Uh, is well, that what it is? I'll get back to your tweet. But uh, yeah, actually. Don't uh, get back to my tweet. Uh, uh, Joe from our season, older Joe, uh, he actually came with our name, Dara or Dara, and that's a name for a star in Cambodian or uh, Khmer. Mm -hmm. So everybody's naming their tribe after a star. But uh, what'd you have an OJ uh, Simpson reference? Yeah, and I was like, I was like, that's a little old. No, people man. got on that's me. A little dated. People got on me of like how, that uh, nice uh, jokes that or or uh, I'm a millennial that how that you are making jokes that I don't understand. Yeah, yeah, we were like ten or fourteen Kato around Kalen, that time. I post a picture of like I'm really digging this new tribe name. I post a picture of Kato Kalen. P Kato Kalen has not stood the test of time. No, no. See, I thought that he was sort of that, uh, like... No, nobody con remembers Continued him. to be a celebrity. Nah, you wouldn't need to have done it after all those OJ uh, documentaries or whatever they mm -hmm. were came out. Yeah. Um, yeah, He even in the People versus OJ yeah. Simpson, I feel like that maybe Cato Kalin didn't have a big... Oh, big enough role. He didn't have a big role, because I feel mm. like Marsha Clark, I think that people uh, still yeah. hear about her. She's more captivating, maybe. Yeah. Who was the... Uh, uh, Darden? Uh, Darden, was he the, the other guy? Who was the guy who drove him? That started? Uh, yeah, uh, Al Cowling. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And then also, yeah. Um, I mean, it was a nice attempt. Johnny Cochran, I feel like, has uh, stood the test of time. That's true. But, but not not uh, the Survivor fans. They only yeah. know about John Cochran. Right, right, right. right. Before. <laughs> Listen, it was a nice try. Yeah. So I thought that was, uh, it made me uh, chuckle, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that's the only thing. You have to make yourself laugh on Twitter, right? Yeah. Screw everybody else. Yeah. What are you, you going to do? All right. Um, this is a tweet. From uh, KP Fenninger 91. Uh, yo, mayo, do you prefer olive oil mayo or are you a heathen? Uh, I like olive oil, yeah. Yeah. But I don't like mayo. You don't like mayo. So, no. do you, do, is that a curse to be the mayo jar, but you don't like mayo? Well, it's like kind of uh, like a drug dealer, right? You don't try your own product. Mm -hmm. You just dish it what, out. Yeah, do you make mayonnaise also? No, in this no, no. Fictional no, world? No. Well, no, I do not. <laughs> um, you know, you know when uh, I played football in high school, like cheerleaders would say, "Oh, you're Mayo because you're on a roll." Okay. Yeah. Oh, all right, come on, you're young kids at that age. That's the best they can do. Yeah. <laughs> well, what position did you play in football? In high school, I was uh, tight end and safety. Tight end. I, and I don't. Uh, I don't need any tight end jokes. But uh, yes. But tight you, end and but safety. But you you went both ways. <laughs> I went both ways. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What did you prefer? Uh, ah, that's a tough question. I don't know. I, I like safety a lot. It was fun to play. Mm -hmm. But I played tight end in college for a little bit until I got hurt. Yeah, what, the back injury. The back injury. Yeah. But you don't want to hurt your back on Survivor, as we know, Elizabeth. And Pat. And Pat. Oh, poor Pat. Poor Pat. This, this season was after him. This new season was named after him, themed after him. Yeah. Was that something that you were concerned about when you were on the like the choppy waves? I wasn't. Uh, no, but it is rough in those boats. You're down like in the bottom of these boats. It's really annoying. Mm -hmm. uh, in these small boats, it's claustrophobic. But uh, yeah, maybe they changed their ways after that. Uh, who knows? Who okay. knows? Okay. All right. And... Let me see if there's anything else. There's got. The... Oh, I saw no, Wiggler's comment. Oh, Josh Wiggler. Yeah, Venmo he... me back for the couple's massage. Yeah, Venmo me back for the couple's massage. What does he mean by that? Bro. Well, we got a couple's massage when we were in town for your birthday. He came out here for your birthday just for you. Who got a couple's massage? Wiggler and I. Oh, you and Josh Wiggler. Yeah. Got a couple's massage. Okay, the two of you got. A, I, yeah. I thought like this was like some sort of a double date. That no, uh, but it, I guess that that's weird. Nobody no, does that. Nobody, no. no, no two couples go for a massage right. at the same time. We were both laying down. Right. If, if the viewers can see this, we were both laying down as a couple's massage, and his wife Emily was massaging our backs at the same time. One I hand on me, one hand on the Tread lightly here, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize again. Actually, I met Emily. She's a sweetheart. I apologize to her to her face for bringing her into this mess. She was really fun. Yes, yes. I uh, like her. She seems like the bantering type, my type of person. Yes, you feel like that she is a bantering type. So, but I'll still tread lightly. You're correct. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> I let me see if I have any other uh, voicemails to play for you. Uh, let me see. Look at my list. Are you, are you trying to get out of here? What do you think about the traffic? No, I'm no. Actually, it only, it only took me like forty minutes today. It was great. Okay. I think everybody's yeah, whatever. All right, let's see. Uh, we let's see what else. What else do I have that I haven't played for you? Um, let's uh, see. how would you rank this season? Uh, out of all the new player seasons from let's say thirty to now thirty seven. I think it's hard to do after seven episodes because I think that I would rank Ghost Island super high after mm, seven episodes, that's true. especially coming okay. off of the Chris Noble boot at the merge. That's true. I, I think that we need to get like okay. closer to closer to the end before we can really start to talk about it. Like so much, so much can change. Yeah. What do we have? Like six more weeks, probably, right, or four more. So this season is actually the end is coming up quick here. Uh, so today is November 9th. Right. We have an episode next week, the 15th. Then it's Thanksgiving. Then at some point, I think <gasps> we're going to have a two-hour episode. Oh, shoot. Yeah, that's not much. And then we, and then, and then we have the 29th, and then we have uh, two weeks in December, and then it's the finale. So there are only going to be six Survivor. Yeah, six. There's only, actually, there's only five uh, Survivor weeks. weeks and then the finale. So wow. just in terms of like booking the show, wow. it's something that I end up being sort of uh, acutely aware of here at the end of the season. Are you a fan of them stacking? No. The players towards the end, more and more I, players. I, I, I I'm not that, either. I, I wish that they would lose more people in the beginning of the season, but then we end up potentially with the co wrong. I'm with, I'm totally you guys, with you. Yeah, See, s- scared the hell out of them. I know. I feel like of like I, what if we end up with just five people and then Joe Del Campo has to get medevaced and then now what do we do? I know, and I think I honestly think, and this sucks to say. I think our season kind of uh, scares them into some decision making. Yeah, why? What what decision making? Like stacking. Yeah, the more players towards the end, uh, and and afraid of uh, not entertaining win or win, or not a person who's good at speaking in confessionals or whatever, not playing the game. I think they're afraid of that. So why why not stack the deck more towards the end so you're not in that position? Mm-hmm. I agree, though. I don't think they should do it. It right. sucks. And, and I think it sucks that, like, again, I'm going to say, I think Chrissy would have been a great winner for th- season 35, but I do believe this, I have no inside information, that Devin would have been a winner kind of like Michelle, okay? And I don't think you can be afraid of that. I don't think you can be afraid of having a crappy winner. or a, I, I Crappy know. is not the right word. Crappy is not the right word. Um, but in terms of like a super visible, uh, winner where we, you know, it, that you feel like that the show overcorrected of, we have to show you a lot of the winner to the point where it's almost, uh, you know, you know, there's almost too much out there. Yeah. Because I, I remember, uh, Burnett or Prope said it, but Burnett had originally said it. Uh, the story about is about, uh, the people losing. The, pe- the people losing the challenge. Like, don't focus as much on the people winning the challenge. Okay, they're elated. Mm-hmm. But, like, show the defeat. Show the heartbreak over this. So I think when you have a not favorable winner, an unfavorable winner for the season, well, then show the heartbreak. Show uh, somebody who's a, a, a fan favorite losing more so than trying to make somebody into a better winner than they are. Does that make sense? Don't focus on the winner so much. There's mm-hmm. so many other characters, and defeat yeah. is an amazing tool to showcase us. I think. Yeah, I'm. You know, don't care who the winner is in terms. Yeah. Of, I'd rather I'd rather have you know the most exciting yes. story, and then you know whoever wins wins. That's what I'm on, and I do think maybe the producers overcorrected after our season. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who's that's an that's an assumption, everybody. <laughs> Who's to say? Who's to say? Wow, um, Nick is a douche. What? <laughs> well, that was a perfect timing for that. <laughs> Who said that? That was, uh, I guess... Who, I, give I think, me his name. I, I think it was Syrup Guy, if I had to recall. Syrup Guy? Yeah. I think, that was, I think that was a voicemail. What's your address, buddy? Wow, Nick is a douche. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> and I, I only thought of it today because I got uh, this voicemail sent to us uh, today for this episode of the podcast. Wow, Dan is a douche. <laughs> so I don't know why Dan got <laughs> everybody's a douche, huh? You. No, first of all, Dan is nothing like me. Okay, mm-hmm. he's an actual douche. Yeah, he's so he's not ahead of you on no, that dr- dry not, erase magnet not board. At all. Are you kidding me? Yeah, bland Dan. <laughs> I'm just joking, Dan. Okay, 
Nick, what what else? I, I feel like that you're gonna leave, and I'm gonna think of a hundred other things. No, that I want to talk yeah, to you about. I don't. I don't need to leave right now. It's a Friday. Okay, let's see. Bro. Let me see. What else did I, in my notes did I write down? Yeah, we can to cut this. Talk about from the episode. Although let's the Facebook see. people are probably like, yo. Oh, uh, what what's better to be the mayor of Ponderosa or the mayor of Slamtown? Ooh, mayor. Uh, I'd rather be the mayor of Slamtown. Mayor of Ponderosa sucks because you're voted out first, or you're the first person to get the. Uh, to Ponderosa, no. Okay, so you're rather the mayor of Slamtown. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, what would you think of Drunk Carl? Drunk Carl. Uh, Drunk Carl is funny. Yeah, people do get a little tipsy at the merge. That happens. Mm-hmm. And but you're, you're not a big drinker, right? No, I'm not a big drinker. That's not my thing. I will drink, but it's not my thing. Uh, yeah, I would not get tipsy at the merge. I do not advise it. Mm-hmm. But props, Carl. Drunk Carl got uh, what he wanted done. <laughs> yeah. So he made a wish. Yeah. And it happened. <laughs> yeah. So good on good on Carl. Um, Gabby was talking about how she didn't like how mm. it was shaping up with the Davids versus the Goliaths because she felt like it was it was kind of on the nose. To be a David and feel like an underdog, and then to see it play out in real time, where the Goliaths walk up and down the beach and feel like they have their pick of the litter of who they want to take out, is just so on theme. Was so on theme that the David the way it goes. We're, we're gonna get picked off by the Goliaths. But what what would be more on theme, Nick, if the well, Goliaths acted bossy and then tried David to pick up wins. the Davids? But then the, but then the Davids just when like uh, shouldn't the Goliaths be like, isn't this so on theme <laughs> that the Davids come from nowhere? <laughs> To take us out just when it looked like we had everything going. Let me say something. That would be a fantastic confessional if a producer got that from somebody. After hearing Gabby, they, you, you know they're talking about it. a little it. on the nose? Oh, I hope one of them got it. Uh, yeah, no, it is on the nose. Do you think Gabby's tears are crocodile tears? Do you think she's faking it? I don't know. Do you think she's playing I, I'm really, it up? I, I'm really, I don't know either. I, I really don't know. Uh, that uh, I really felt like that they were on Wednesday night, and then oh, after okay. after talking to Elizabeth on the exit interview, I felt like that they weren't. Okay. But and because, then because when on I talked to her, she says it's not. It seems like um, when I talked to Kellen, then she was saying like, "Hey, just because she's tr- she's crying, don't like it doesn't mean that she doesn't have agency either. Like uh, she might just be you know, sad, but then also still doing something at the same time. So I don't know." These are not, these, you know, uh, like crying. It seems very complicated. And you or I are not the people that could. We're not even... equipped, right? So I don't know. I don't do know. You, do you think people should be getting so upset about being voted out? About being voted out? Why? Who's getting upset about being voted out? Gabby? Well, I mean, just uh, no, like in the pre-merge and stuff like that. Pe- people do get bent out of shape over it or getting targeted. Look, do you think people should behave that way? I find who, it a little who hypocritical. Are you ta- who are you talking about? Uh, okay, we can say Dan. We can say Jeremy. We can say Natalie. We can say Gabby because she's crying Look, about it. Uh, I, I will grant people, you know, whatever. If they want, if if I found out people were going to be voting uh, voting against me... Uh, then, you know, I could totally understand because I, I get mad about, you know, petty, dumb stuff okay. in real life. Okay. So, and then if somebody like, uh, where it's like, Hey, some, so-and-so is doing this. And then you had a camera on me right after that. I'd be like, ho, <laughs> what? How dare they? Yeah. How dare they? So I, I can understand that. And, and if I was on Survivor and I found out that somebody was like, what? Nick? My friend, <laughs> right, who is right. uh, that my buddy, me? is now throwing my name out there. Who does this guy think he is? Where does he get off? <laughs> okay, fine. Okay. So I would, I, I, and then getting voted out, I can totally understand that because uh, one time I got really upset about getting voted off. Right. Well, yeah. One time uh, I took it pretty well. Well, because you the, made it far. The, the, the other time, the other time that I was really, I was really <laughs> mad. <laughs> That was supposed to be your season to shine. That was I know. it. That was it. That was supposed to be my... Um, my, my, my yeah. I, well, that's what I was going to say. I do think you need people like that uh, who take it personal, who are slightly hypocritical. Because I've, I've been pondering that. Because hypocritical... Pe- hypocr- blah, 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 blah. Hypocritical... Hip- oh, Jesus Christ. Nick, spit it out. Jeez. Hypocritical people on the jury... You hate hypocrites. Well, yeah, they're not good for the jury. They're not good jurors. They're not fair jurors, if that's how you want to view it, or objective. Uh but I do think they're necessary for the game to keep the game interesting. I think that's a double-edged sword. Okay. All right, Nick. I think we covered everything. I think we did as well. Okay, you did a great job. So nice to have you here in the studio. 
It's a pleasure to be in the studio. I love coming up here. It's a way to get from uh, a chance to get away from South Bay. Okay. All right. Uh, maybe this wasn't the greatest day to come up this way. Oh, I know the fire. Dealing yeah. with a lot of fires. Yeah, I know. Well, I'll be passing it. I drove up by it. It was smoky, man. It was scary. I was driving right into the fire. No uh, yeah. wonder I got up here so quick because people were driving out. I'm driving in. I know. Uh, so we'll we'll see. All right, we gotta go check out what's going on with that. But Nick. Uh, so nice to have you here. What, what do you want people to check out? Uh, check out my crazy wall with all the cast members yeah, who but, I'm but, stacking. But what, people have to go see that? In your, yeah, they'd have to come over. At your house. Yeah, that's where I get people over my house. Mm-hmm. Get some friends over. Okay. Socialize. Yes. Uh, what, is that what you want, though? No, no. that's not what I want. No. Um, <laughs> let's be honest. No, you don't need to check out anything. You you know where to find me if you want to find me on Twitter or Instagram. Okay, but, at uh, Nick Majorano Yeah, Nick Twitter. or Nicholas Majorano, one or the other. Okay. I, I haven't been posting much, though. I haven't much, had much to say, but I'm enjoying the season. Okay, and then also same, same on Instagram, that's Nicholas Majorano. Why, why don't you keep it consistent? Some other dude, Nick Majorano, got it before my season aired. I should have got it yeah. early. Where's this picture of you? Uh, what are you, like a soccer game? Oh, yeah, I'm at the LAFC game. Uh, got the idea from some of the producers that were at the game because I saw their pictures. And uh, mm-hmm. it was a great time. I highly suggested it. If you're in LA, I would go to a soccer game. They're very fun. Very fun. What, are you a soccer fan? No, I'm not a soccer fan. I mean, I gr- grew up playing soccer, but mm-hmm. uh, it's just a fun atmosphere. It's a really great uh, sporting experience. Okay. All you right. should go. Eh, nah. I mean, if I'm going to leave my house, Nick, come on. I know. It's a far drive for you, too. Yeah. Okay. All right, Nick, uh, so nice to have you here. Anytime you want to come back, anytime you want to co-host the show. We're co-hosting for season 38. Okay, let's do it. Whoever let's, we can let's get. Do, 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 we have to find a guest that's, that you know, maybe there's somebody from season 37 that's listening that's going to be a guest. Like, yeah. I would be happy to be. But people, they don't want to share the spotlight with you. Really? I think that's what I'm it is. Not, but I'm not a person that wants you the are. spotlight. You don't really. I don't you're want the attention. You're uncomfortable with it. Honestly. I want to ask the questions. Yeah. I'm doing. I'm doing. Uh, I'm going out of turn here, or I'm going. I'm, I'm jumping out of my skin here. I don't want to be talking about myself. I know. Okay. I know. That's why uh, I, I want. I want to get it we'll done. We'll get. We'll get it done. We'll get it done. All right. We will figure it out with Nick Majorano, and he will co-host the podcast in season thirty-eight. We're very excited about it. Right. Unless season thirty-nine is David Brains versus, versus Goliath, <laughs> Jimmy <laughs> versus Braun Three, uh, All Stars. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. All right. Nick, thank you so much. Thank you thank so much you. to the patrons of Rob as a Podcast. And we were streaming today live in the uh, Rob as a Podcast patron group. Uh, so had a lot of fun uh, with that. People got to uh, see the filming of the show, warts and all. Uh, hopefully we didn't have uh, too many mistakes. I will be back with Josh Wiggler on, uh, be recording with him on Sunday. Will you have a wand off this week? Oh, no, I don't have a wand. I, come on, I keep giving him material. Okay. No, but... Who, Bob from Columbus? Well, no, Wiggler. I keep giving Wiggler material, man. Okay. What, what kind of material do you give Josh? Well, I give him material for his podcast. Oh. Like, like his jokes? Yeah. Okay. Hey, I asked him to work on a project with me, and he goes, oh, so you think I'm going to work with work for you? You're going to be my boss? And I was like, dude, we'd be a team. Yeah. But no, he, he wasn't no. having it. Okay. All right. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I know. Me too. All right. So thank you so much to the patrons of Rob as a Podcast uh, who make all of this possible. Nick, if it wasn't for the patrons, I'd have to be out. I'd have like some sort of a side hustle. Ugh. I'd probably be like driving an Uber for, you know, eight, nine hours a day. While get, podcasting. Get home from that and do uh, what then then go deliver, uh, you know, uh Take out right, and then in the like other two hours I'd have before I go to sleep, uh, I th- that's where I would f- fit in the podcast. But this the patrons, wouldn't be possible. They allow me to focus on the podcast, and I just and I just go back and then I just watch the well, sorry, I banged the, the microphone. I watch <laughs> the episode again, then I come back and talk about it with more people. That's what happens. I right? know, I know. Okay. It's all because of them. All right, thank you, patrons. Thank you. Uh, love you. And uh, to find out more about becoming a patron, joining our podcast patron community, robiswebsitecom slash patron. Nick, thank you so much. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. All right. I'm going to stop the recording. Stop this recording. And then anything else you want to say to the live stream, Nick? Thank you, live stream. Thank you for your questions. Okay. All right. Thanks for participating.